families. Greedy, weekdays at noon Eastern on ESPN Radio, your smart speaker, and on the ESPN app. Give us the baseball rivalry. St. Louis with Jack Buck and 11 titles. Chicago's Harry Camp breaking curses. Give us the arch, the ivy, and playoff intensity. Give us the Cardinals and the Cubs. Give us Sunday Night Baseball, Sunday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Telecast presented by Taco Bell. The NBA Playoffs on ESPN Radio. Jamal Murray dropped 50 on the Jazz in their last meeting to keep the Nuggets season alive. Steps left, shoots himself, and he trilled it. Jamal Murray. Donovan Mitchell isn't ready to go home just yet. We got one more game. You know, if we're down now, then we've already lost game seven. I don't think anybody's down. It all comes down to this. Jazz Nuggets. Game seven. Today at 8 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ABC. Presented by Indeed. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN690, a Cox Media Group station. This is Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi. One of the most entertaining series in these NBA playoffs comes down to a Game 7 tonight with Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz taking on Jamal Murray and the Nuggets. 8 Eastern ESPN Radio in the ESPN app. 8.30 Eastern on ABC. Murray and Mitchell both have two 50-point games in the series. And making those players uncomfortable, the determining factor for tonight's matchup believes ESPN's Mark Jackson. I'm not willing to, to lose a Game 7 if I'm Utah to Murray. And if, I'm, and if I'm the Nuggets, I don't want to lose it to, to Donovan Mitchell. They have to force other guys to make plays because these guys are in an incredible rhythm right now, knocking down big-time shots. Mark Jackson with Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahenti. Raptors Celtics meeting game two of their second-round series, 5.30 Eastern ESPN TV in the ESPN app. Boston up one game to none. NHL Penguins captain Sidney Crosby had wrist surgery, should be ready to go well before the start of training camp. Is the law the three to five morning line favorite for the 146 Kentucky Derby through the number 17 post for Saturday's race? Honor AP five to one odds through the number 16 post. Download the DraftKings app and use code MAX to get a free shot at millions of dollars up for grabs this week with your first deposit. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904 600 4000. That's 904 600 4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 with Brent Martineau and Austin Lane. It's Tuesday afternoon, and I'm exhausted already. Mm-hmm. Not really. Uh, you don't get exhausted. But it does feel like it's week is long, I will say. After what a day yesterday and Sunday, woke up today, didn't want to look at the phone. Nothing happened. But believe me, I checked. Yeah. How's everybody doing a day later? Jaguars still tanking. Now the storyline is nationally the worst franchise in professional sports, perhaps. Mm. Let's just say this. I don't think that's probably true in terms of the worst. But I will say the fact that it's even raised and brought into the conversation is problematic. Would you put them top five worst? I don't know. I have to go through. You got to remember now, it's been a long time for a lot of different organizations to get to where they got in 17. I mean, everybody just bypasses that. The Cowboys have won, like, what, two playoff games or one playoff game yeah. in the last 20 years or something like that? I mean, in year in, year out, they're better. But, I mean, you, you just you can't dismiss what they did in 17 when you talk about things like this. And there are a lot of teams that haven't had even that inkling of success. And, by the way, that is an inkling because it was just one year in the last 12. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I don't want to also over-dramatize it. It doesn't cover everything up. But it did just happen. Uh, so, uh, I mean, they were – 10 minutes from a Super Bowl. Um, I think there are a lot of teams that haven't even sniffed that kind of success around sports. Uh, But again, the fact that it's raised, fair point to raise it. 
uh, and especially what's gone on from a dramatic fashion with Jalen Ramsey, Yannick Ngakwe. It is interesting that the Leonard Fournette move from a national level put the Jags on everybody's radar. It yeah. wasn't the Ngakwe trade. I mean, there's been stories about it in the football world, whether it's football talk or whatever. Ramsey put everybody on notice a little bit in terms of the Jags because he was a national name. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, waving Fournette, a guy that got overdrafted in many's opinion, now all of a sudden leads to these storylines about the Jacksonville Jaguars' ineptness uh, and at least catches the attention of the national folks. Yeah. I think that's what's interesting to me. I mean, we've been talking about the ineptitude and, and the, the abil inability to consistently win, and the Jaguars have been a little bit of a uh, punchline for that, along with the Browns and other teams for a long time. But now all of a sudden there's this wave of, oh, they just let Fournette go? Well, look at what else has happened. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing that Fournette kind of triggered that, but it also shows you, I think, Fournette's name, recognition, and everything else. Well, I mean, he is the name, right? Like, even with Yannick Ngakwe, you know, he's 25 years old, playing a premier position, a lot of intrigue there. Yeah, I get that. But on, on, on the household name basis, how many people worldwide knew, knew who Yannick Ngakwe was? Probably not that many. People know who Fournette was, is because, obviously, of fantasy football and the position that he plays. And, uh, you know, as he was taken in the first round, third pick overall. So people had a really great idea of what Fournette was. Could I say was now because he's not part of the Jaguars anymore. And I think the fact that you got nothing for him and it's just – it's announced in the airwaves. It's put out there for everyone to see where you just released him – that rubs people the wrong way, right? It's like, whoa, because people, I mean, and not people that are in Jack, I'm talking about the national media, sees that and it's like, you couldn't have got anything for him? And I'll be honest with you, I'm like that too. So I share that national opinion where it's like, you couldn't have got anything for Leonard Fournette. Not one thing for Leonard Fournette. You had to get him out of here right now. You had to just release him. So I think with that being said, it's more of the shocker. Um, it's more of that shock value, if you will. And obviously, when you write in the headlines, that's the one to write about. Well, and again, I, I bring up something that I talked a lot about yesterday during the show, but also after the show. And I, I talked to a lot of folks in, in about just what's going on. And it's really difficult in our position and place as we're trying to illustrate the story and even difficult maybe in Doug Marone's and others to illustrate the story without specific incidents of what else is going on beneath the surface mm -hmm. of with Leonard Fournette. Uh, so that becomes a very tricky part in this. Doug Marone chose not to throw him under the bus necessarily in his press conference, although he did say the fact that he said we couldn't get a fifth, a sixth, or a seventh said a lot. That That is about as much as a coach will throw a player under the bus. Mm. I mean, he wasn't holding back on that front. He didn't have to offer that up. He actually did offer that up. And the more and more I thought about that throughout the night, I was like, that was a pretty, that was a dig at Leonard. You know, and we mentioned that on the show. I mean, did they stick it to Leonard a little bit? Well, that soundbite stuck it to Leonard a little mm. bit to say, hey, we tried to get something for him, but nobody would even offer anything for him. So that was as close as they've come, but they still haven't necessarily said, or nobody will say, well, yeah, uh, you know, in that meeting back on August 12th, he punched a teammate or, you know, I mean, there isn't that story out of Jags headquarters of that. Mm -hmm. It's it's more the totality, the accumulation of little things here and there over the course of time. And by the way, it is important to note that the coaching staff has been through all that these last four years. They've been with Leonard since day one, from Doug Marone to others. Now, not every member of the staff, but a lot of the members of the staff have been with Doug Marone since day one. And that starts to pile up sometimes. You know, we've talked about it with coaches before. You know, Jim Harbaugh uh, in San Francisco goes to a Super Bowl, does a good job. But you know what else? He's a pain in the butt in the building. And so after a while, it starts to build and build. And it's like, man, I've kind of had enough of Jim. He's mm. pretty good, but I've kind of had enough of Jim. And then they open the door by going 5 and 11 one year, and they're like, boom, see ya, Jim. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Sure. And so you almost, that's the best way I can kind of feel or equate to Leonard, where it's like, it was enough. It was enough. And was how much is he going to help us? Uh, can we save a few million in guarantees? Can we? Do we want all these guys in the building that are all in team only? That's the only thing I can gauge. But you don't have this one instance, two instances where it's like, oh, it really turned. I had somebody reach out well, again today, and they're like, hey, so what was it? He had to do something. He had to, uh, you know, it, there must be a, something going on with 
he, he got in trouble outside of the facility. Mm -hmm. He did something to a teammate. He did. But I'm telling I don't, at least I don't, believe there is that incident that actually pivoted the Jags in the last week to say, we got to get him out of here. We're cutting him. Yeah. I just think it's a, an accumulation of things. And, uh, again, they've had enough. They've had enough of the Ramseys, Telvin Smiths, and, and whatever Fournette gave, and I think he was mild compared to some of the stuff those other guys had yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. But they'd had enough. I mean, that's the only thing I can come well, up with and, and the only thing that adds up in this situation. It's not football-related. I mean, we know that. Sure. It's not performance on the field. He's the most productive player, and he's your, one of your better offensive players. Here's what I've had enough of, though, Brent. And we, you and I both know this isn't football-related. There's something more to this, at least. Yeah. I mean, it, the, pretty much the writing's on the wall. But here's what I've had enough of then. I've had enough of a front office and an organization who constantly pile on the bad optics for themselves. What do you gain right now by trying to, quote, unquote, protect Leonard Fournette then? You, then you're doing Leonard Fournette a favor by saying, you know what? It was a scheme thing. He's been nothing but great to us. Let, we, we just want to let him go. It's a scheme thing. What, what are you doing by not telling the truth then? If it really is the truth, well, maybe he didn't get along with some teammates. Maybe there were some discrepancies in the locker room. Maybe him and a coach went at it. Why not just say then he wasn't a part of the culture that you envisioned going forward? Why not say something like that? Because all we have to go off of right now is what you told us. And what you told us at the press conference was he doesn't fit the scheme. So when I hear that, when the national media hears that, we all know it's BS. So what favor are you doing Leonard Fournette by trying to protect him? Well, it's a good call. Uh, I do. I said that yesterday during the show. I wish they would have just been, can you just be a little bit more forthcoming and transparent to say, listen, it, it, maybe it was a little bit of us and the way we've changed things and done things. Maybe it's a little bit of Leonard, mm -hmm. but it just wasn't a good fit. It just hasn't meshed. He's a good football player. Uh, and, and, and we think it's better if he has a fresh start somewhere else, and it's better for us if we have a, a, a fresh start. I don't understand why you can't say that either. I said it yesterday on the show. But there is something about this business, I do think, that you try to take the high road. Uh, and we just saw it with two players, by the way, in the last two days for the Jags. Yannick Ngakwe took the high road. He didn't take a parting shot as he left. And Leonard Fournette took the high road in his statement instead of blaming the organization or saying they handled it poorly, all this stuff. I think that's the way the organization wants to handle things, too. That's looked at as the high road, the classy Whoa. way to do it, not throw a player under the bus. I mean, that's – I think most organizations in sports try to do that. How many, how many times? I mean, even when Terrell Owens left, when Antonio Brown left, did Mike Tomlin take a shot at him when he left? Come on, man. That's not the same thing because the writing was on the wall well, with those. I, I get we're, it. I'm just trying to – I'm listen. thinking of the extreme situations yeah, where everybody but, knew but it. But let's be honest. Exactly. Because Antonio Brown sabotaged himself. When yeah. Antonio Brown tweeted about Ben Roethlisberger, tweeted about the GM, tweeted about Juju Smith-Schuster, the writing was on the wall. It wasn't going to work out. Like yeah. he, he made that abundantly clear. Same thing with Terrell Owens. Whether it was the, the, the interviews, whether it was what he had to say in the comments, people knew that Terrell Owens, that locker room, there was a rift. I didn't get that sense with Leonard Fournette in that locker room, okay? Now, you hear rumblings and things like that, but I didn't get that sense. And, and once again, sure, you can be like Leonard Fournette. You can be like Yannick Ngakwe and take the high road like players do sometimes. But guess what? Right now, I'm not criticizing Leonard Fournette. Right now, the national media is not criticizing uh, Yannick Ngakwe. They're criticizing the Jacksonville Jaguars. So where is taking the high road got you right now? Why, why, why take the high road? We just you don't gotta bring a player down. Just say it was a cultural difference, or maybe we envisioned something going forward. Whatever the reason was, you could have came up with a better excuse if that's truly what you believe in, as opposed to he doesn't fit our scheme. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't have minded a better excuse. Uh, I think there's a way to handle it without actually blowing up Leonard Fournette, uh, because listen, the bottom line is, people around the league know what's been going on. It's a small circle. Mm. They know if. I mean, there's no doubt if somebody thinks Leonard's a pain in the butt to coach, there's a coach out there in Jacksonville that at the Combine over the last couple of years has said he's a pain in the butt. I mean, he's a good player, but he's a pain in the butt. Sure. Oh, my gosh, he's such a headache. Uh, you know, I mean, that happens. That happens in every business, and people talk. And so that's out there along the way. That's maybe one of the reasons why Jags didn't get anything in return because somebody knew they'd pick him up on the cheap sooner or later. To get your point across even more, mm. that this was not football-related only, mm -hmm. And very, I don't even think it was football related. Okay, mm -hmm. Greg Allman uh, works for uh, he works in Tampa. Uh, oh shoot, now I just uh, lost it. I just want to make sure. I, no, actually, works for the Athletic. I think he used to be uh, Tampa Bay Times. Works for the Athletic, covering the Bucks. Okay, he just says this. 
two NFL running backs from 2017 to 19. A, 2,600 yards, 4.0 average, 1,009 yards receiving, and 19 touchdowns. Running back B, 2,900 rush yards, 4.2 average, 870 reception yards, and 21 touchdowns. One just got a four-year, $48 million extension. The other just got waived rather than being paid $4 million in 2020. Hmm. We're talking about Joe Mixon, who just got a new deal. Yeah. And we're talking about Leonard, Leonard Fournette. Fournette. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, it's not football-related in the Leonard deal. Yes. And so, I, you know, I think people will be like, well, Doug Marone lied. I think we called Doug on that yesterday. I just don't know. I, I'm not willing to sit here and say he should have thrown Leonard under the bus. You know, I wish but, he could have shared more, yeah. maybe said a little something else. Try not to say, yeah, we want to go forward with our best players. Okay, stop the car uh, because there's a separate thing in there, and I remember saying it yesterday. Best players and best for the team is what he said in one sentence, and those are two separate things. What they, he should have basically said is we're doing what's best for the team. We think this is best for the team. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and but as soon as you bring in best players, well, then Leonard belongs in the conversation. So let me ask you this question: Who made this decision? Shad Khan, Doug Marone, Dave Caldwell, or Gruden? I think Marone. You think Marone made it? I think Doug Marone made the decision. Hmm. That's my opinion. Yeah. I think again, man, he's been with them. Listen, Caldwell, whether even if he didn't like the pick, right? There's there's talk out there. He didn't like the pick. It was Tom Coughlin's pick. He would have never picked in the top five a running yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, if you're going to sit there and throw to me, well, Dave Caldwell really wanted Patrick Mahomes that year. I call BS. Mm-hmm. All right? I don't believe it. Mm-hmm. He was a Bortles guy. He drafted Bortles. And I'm not buying in hindsight that he wanted Watson or Mahomes instead of Fournette. I will buy, because I think I know Caldwell pretty well, that I don't think he is a big top five running back guy. Mm-hmm. in the NFL draft. Which a lot of GMs and aren't. Most aren't. Yeah. So I'll buy that. Mm-hmm. But so if you want to sell me on, hey, Dave Caldwell got rid of him because he couldn't wait to get rid of him because he didn't like the pick of him in the top five, I don't buy that as much either. Dave Caldwell doesn't have to go day-to-day with Leonard Fournette. Mm-hmm. Doug Marone is a day-to-day dealing with Leonard Fournette, and his other coaches are, and coaches come back to him, and players come to him, and so he's the centerpiece of that. Shad Khan, I don't think – has anything to do with whether Leonard Fournette's back. Unless he said, I want to save $4 million in guarantees, and if we get out from under this deal, uh, unless we lose a grievance, we don't have to pay him those guarantees. He could have come in from a cash perspective standpoint. Mm-hmm. I think this was all Marone. Mm-hmm. Now, when I say Marone, I think it was coaching staff related in Marone. Uh, I think it's simple. I, th- I don't think it's – I think it's clear as day. This was Doug Marone saying, you know what? To our conversation yesterday, if I'm going to die on the sword this year – I'm sure as heck not going to put up with the crap that I've put up with for three years. I'm going to do it my way with the guys that I want. Mm. And if we're going to lose 12 games, I'd rather lose 12 games with these guys. Yeah. I, I mean, I do. I, uh, you asked me the question. I think no, it was Marone. Do you listen, think it was Marone or do you think somebody else? Um, I do think it was Marone. I think if you look at Gruden, like, listen, if you're interviewing Gruden, and you share your roster. You think Gruden was like, well, we have to get rid of Leonard Fournette. Like, don't you think that would be taken care of then a lot early? I mean, I just – I can't foresee Gruden in a job interview saying, you know what, my offense, I like what we got here, but let's get rid of Leonard Fournette. Doesn't fit this scheme. Like, I, I have a hard time believing that. It, no. it, it's my philosophy that – and what's gonna, and what I've been praising Gruden since the day they signed him, he does a great job of taking what he has on his personnel and evolving his offense around that. So to tell me that you couldn't evolve your offense around Leonard Fournette, come on, man. What, what are we really talking about here? So I do agree with you. I think it was Doug Marone's decision. I don't think that Shad Khan even has a fingerprint on this one. I don't think Dave Caldwell would actually be for letting Leonard Fournette go just for the fact that – what does it say about you as a GM then? Like this was – Yeah, that's re- another hey, thing. Re- regardless if you want a Leonard Fournette or not, yeah, guess what? It's on your watch. You picked him on your watch, yeah. okay? So you're tied to him, just yeah. like you're tied to Blake Bortles, just like you're tied to every single first-round pick here in Jacksonville. So the fact that he doesn't finish out his contract here, to me that makes the GM look bad. Yeah. And that's – I mean, I've been chastising Ryan Pace and the Chicago Bears for how long now? Why? Because he can't pick a first-round pick correctly. Yep. Well, one could say the same thing now with, with Leonard Fournette leaving here. So I think this was Doug Marone's call. Once again, though, I mean, 
How Listen, much do you have to be bothered by a guy, by the way, in a year that you need to win this is to take exactly your best offensive point. player and just cut him? This is exactly and I my point. You, and, and to get to your point, and not to put words in your mouth, yeah. but I think you say this yesterday, you've been consistent with it. You're not going to have, really, to put words in Dave Caldwell's mouth, 53 angelic players on the roster. You have to figure out a way to make it work. That's part of your job as the coach. Yeah. And so the, basically what Marone's admitting here is that he could not figure it out. He yeah. couldn't figure out a way to make it work with Fournette. And, and, and this is the issue, right? Because if Leonard Fournette truly was a detriment to that locker room and – and the, the players were against him, and like it was just you're better off washing your hands of Leonard Fournette than keeping him on the team. Then, man, I I really got to question your vision of a football team, okay? Because I've been on plenty of teams in this league uh, in the past, and I've played with tons of egos, okay? I mean, how many times have I shared a story about Travis Kelsey? 2013, Travis Kelsey gets drafted. Very first practice of the, uh, the, of the Kansas City Chiefs in training camp. Kelsey catches a touchdown pass, kicks the ball into the end zone, and, like, stops practice. Everyone chews him out. And I remember I turned to one of my teammates and said, this guy's not going to make it two years. There, there's no way, okay? Because keep in mind, he was a quarterback out of college. He comes in cocky. It's just like, dude, this guy is not going to fit what Kansas City's trying to do here. But you know what? Andy Reid saw something in him. Andy Reid has obviously got the best out of Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends in the league. Sure, Travis Kelsey's had a couple spats here or there. He's got a couple flags, celebrations, you know, things like that. But overall, he's a captain now. So what does that say about the culture in Kansas City? When I saw a guy coming, I'm like, there's no way this guy's going to be able to last in the NFL, man. He's got the worst attitude ever. To now, he's a captain on a Super Bowl winning team. So... I get that. Yeah, you want to get rid of the bad guys sometimes, the guys that aren't in it for to win it with stuff like that. But at the same time, you got rid of one of your best offensive weapons, if not the best offensive weapon. How can't you make it work? Yeah. I Well, listen, I, I thought they should try to make it work the entire offseason instead of even trying to trade them. Yeah, uh, I I, th- I understand you can have too many. We've had these conversations. You have too many guys that are bad apples that are just messing it up, that aren't bought in, that aren't team guys. And and by the way, not a team guy doesn't necessarily make you a bad guy. I, I again, I, I did a, an essay on uh, TV last night on Leonard. I and I said it countless times. He's complicated. He's got a good heart. I think he's a fun guy, man. Yeah. I, I mean, if he was your, I, he's a he's fun. He's a good player. But I also think there's a selfish nature to him inside that headquarters that oozes out and rubs people the wrong way. That's the only way I can explain it. Sure. Uh, Jalen was the same on steroids, by the way, in that regard. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't on steroids. I'm just saying he was not. I mean, it was that was evident. Everybody well, knew it to the point where it was almost like Jalen, when Jalen was like that, you're like, yeah, whatever, that's Jalen being Jalen. Mm-hmm. When Leonard was trying to turn the corner, go to Wyoming, be a little more mature, admitted that he had to clean things up, and he's still trying and it's still not happening, it's almost like a little more subtle annoyance on a daily basis or a weekly basis or a whatever basis. Um, it might almost be harder to deal with because it's a constant reminder than even Jalen. Because Jalen, you just push him off over into his own corner and say, just come out and play on Sunday. <laughs> Listen, and... I don't know the extent to what everybody thought about Leonard Fournette. Once again, all I have to go off of is what some guys in the locker room tell me and what my eyes tell me on the field, okay? And I think when you want to compare it to Jalen, the writing was kind of on the wall for Jalen, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You remember when he had the whole back incident, Marcel Darius kind of made a wisecrack yes. about that a yes. little bit. They were tired you know? of him. But, I mean, they were tired of Jalen Ramsey. Some folks. Some folks are tired of Jalen Ramsey. And that happens in a locker room. Not, it's not all across the board. Yeah. Now, regardless if guys were tired of Leonard Fournette, regardless if guys thought, you know what, let's go ahead and get him out of here. Maybe it was the coaches, maybe it was the players. But let's keep in mind right now. Let's go. Let, let's look at this roster from top to bottom on the Jacksonville Jaguars. How many guys in this roster have played on successful teams? Not that many. No. Okay. How many guys in that roster knows what it takes to win a Super Bowl? Do they have any now? Probably not. How, how many guys in that roster knows what it takes to go to the playoffs? Probably not that many. But you mean to tell me that Leonard Fournette was the problem? But you mean to tell me that Leonard Fournette's going to be the guy that's the difference between you guys going to the playoffs and not going to the playoffs? How do you know? How do you know? No, maybe, listen, maybe Avery Jones didn't like him. Maybe, like, see, there's a couple guys in that locker room that obviously they have tenure. They've been around it for a while. They can speak out, in my opinion, right? But when you have the youngest team in the NFL and you take out one of your most seasoned vets on the team, 
What are we talking about right now? But what if the seasoned vet is leading a, ba- a group of young guys to a bat to down the bad road, man? I mean, that's what this is. Are is, are they down a bad road? There, Jalen Ramsey led people down a bad road. Telvin Smith uh, joined that road. Mm-hmm. There were others that maybe Leonard at times that joined that road. That was a road they didn't want to go down, and too many guys started going down that road. And maybe with this young team and trying to redo this culture that has been so messed up. Yeah here in Jacksonville to try to build it, which this will be a foundation, whether Doug Marone, Dave Caldwell, whoever's still around next year or not, having that guy be the example is something that you say, it's not worth it. I'm it's just, just not worth having that guy around. Uh, I'm going to say this, man. Back in 2017, when you had all these egos, you had all these personalities and you were winning, when I saw Jalen Ramsey come off the field from Pittsburgh and go on the Jay, it seemed like everyone was right around, right around him. It seemed like they're all tight and close-knit and ready to win and ready to go to New England and do their thing. It seemed like everybody was all hunky-dory then. Wow. Well, when they started losing, then you started to see it snowball a little bit. The words right? show up. Yeah, well, exactly. So I guess my point is, I get it. Maybe Leonard Fournette wasn't the best locker room guy. Obviously, Jalen Ramsey wasn't. Maybe Telvin Smith wasn't when he was on the team. That's fine. But last time I checked, when you had those guys on the field, you won some games with them, okay? And now they're gone. So I would much rather have maybe guys that you're like, oh, I don't know, as opposed to winning games, as opposed to, you know what? We have the best bunch of guys. We're, we're the best friends. We go to each other's house after practice. It's fantastic. We have dinner together and win two games a season. Every NFL team is made up of different personalities. We're about to maybe see if that's the case. Uh, yeah. Perception versus reality. I've been told this different inside the building versus outside the building. <laughs> uh, also, uh, something that I was going to get to yesterday that I didn't, but I want to elaborate on. Do the Jags have a little bit of smartest guy in the room syndrome right now? It certainly feels that way. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of the Gene Smith days, if I'm being honest. Uh, We'll see how it pans out. Maybe they are smarter than everybody else. I don't have a bad word to say about Gene Smith. You should. (laughs) (laughs) We'll have more of the discussion coming up on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Sorry, Kuz, we went very long in that first segment. We'll be back. Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau on ESPN 690 is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. A mix of clouds and sun today with once again some, some shower. showers and thunderstorms at times. Highs around 90 degrees. Join me beginning at 5 p.m. for CBS 47 at Fox 30. Action News Jacks from the First Alert Weather Center. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds. Save thousands right now with Beards Unbeatable Deals. Hi, I'm Hunt Hawkins, CEO of Steinmart and Chair of the 2020 First Coast Heart Walk. The Heart Walk is going virtual, and while we might not be able to meet in person this year, we still need you to support the American Heart Association's mission of being a relentless force for a world of longer, healthier lives for all. At Steinmart, caring is one of our core values, and we care about the health of our community. We will be unified in the fight to improve our health and the health of our families and our community. So let's walk, register, and start a fundraising team today at firstcoastheartwalk.org, and then make plans to join us on Saturday, September 12th to Heart Walk Where You Are. Let's make a difference in the fight against heart disease and stroke. Again, register today at firstcoastheartwalk.org. Locally sponsored by Steinmart, Florida Blue, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Ascension St. Vincent's, Baptist Health, Brooks Rehabilitation, Main Street America, and Mayo Clinic. Let's say you have ED, male impotence, or maybe you suffer from PE and can't satisfy your partner. If you have either or both of these embarrassing conditions, Prime Men's Medical Center has the solution. Meet Dr. Rabinsky, a specialist in men's health. If you're experiencing ED or PE, Prime Men's Medical Center has custom blended medications designed just for you. There's no pain and no surgery. If you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or prostate issues, not a problem. If Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra have let you down, Prime Men's Medical Center has patients lasting 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer. You'll see results on your first visit visit guaranteed or your visit is free and best of all it's affordable for a private consultation with our highly skilled physicians call 904-206-8105 we guarantee that you'll see results on your first visit or there's no charge for your consult call prime men's medical center now at 904-206-8105 that's 904-206-8105 
Do you know a child who is deaf, hard of hearing, blind, or visually impaired? The Florida School for the Deaf and Blind in St. Augustine is a fully accredited, tuition-free state public school that gives children an edge for a lifetime of success. FSDB is nationally recognized for its educational services designed for students' unique communication and accessibility needs. Eligible pre-K and kindergarten through 12th grade students benefit from small class sizes, advanced technology, and various recreation, extracurricular, and performing arts activities. Transportation and boarding services are free to any eligible deaf or blind student kindergarten through high school, no matter where the student lives in Florida. My name is Trent Ferguson, and I'm a proud graduate of this wonderful school. This place changes lives. To learn more information or to apply for enrollment, call 800-344-3737 or log on to www.fsdbk12.org. I never knew my home would become my workplace. I never dreamed it would be my child's school. And I never imagined my home would be under attack from an invisible enemy called COVID-19. This is why I trust SafeTouch Security. It's one app that puts me in control. My SafeTouch system allows me to control who's on my property, movement while the kids are at home learning their school lessons, who I speak with without even opening the front door, as well as home deliveries, my heating and air conditioning, door locks, and complete protection against the threats of fire, burglary, and assault. You know, you can even have control over your car. Know you are safe with the most up-to-date security system from SafeTouch. SafeTouch Security has been doing what others can't for over 35 years. Reliable local monitoring. No other company comes close to SafeTouch's track record on guaranteed response times. Go to safetouch.com and find out how you can get zero down and free equipment with a lifetime warranty. That's safetouch.com. State license number EF0000233. Looking for a vehicle, but you just don't want any ride. You want the best you can get, and you don't want just any old savings. You want the best savings, right? Then it's time to get it all and get yourself over to Arlington Toyota pre-owned today. Finding the best ride starts with big-time selection. And at Arlington Toyota, you'll find over 750 new and pre-owned on the lot every day, and it's all priced at savings to put you behind the wheel. If only you could get financed, right? Well, you can at Arlington. That's because Arlington Toyota's Credit for Everyone program means that if you've got a Beacon score between 450 or 850, Arlington's getting almost everyone approved. So why wait? Arlington's got the savings. Arlington's got the selection. And Arlington Toyota has got the financing. But Arlington's also got your back because you get a 30-day exchange policy with your purchase. That's 30 days to love it or exchange it. Just another way Arlington goes the extra mile for you. Get it all when you shop pre-owned at Arlington Toyota, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard, or online anytime at arlingtontoyota.com. Hey folks, Dave Benyon here with Zero Res. Can you believe that it has been 16 years since we started our little business? It has been wonderful meeting and serving all the good people of Jacksonville. My wife and I got into Zero Res because of the amazing powered water technology that set them apart from all the other carpet cleaners. Powered water has proven to be very effective over the years at cleaning carpets, tile, upholstery, rugs, and more. Zero Res is also proactive at developing and testing new equipment to provide the very best cleaning results possible. It's fun to be part of a company that is always trying to get better. For September, we are going back to our original price from 16 years ago. Three rooms of carpet clean for only $99. That's the hottest price of the year on carpet. So give us a call at 287-5727. Zero res spelled forward or backwards. It's the right way to clean. C-E-R-O-R-E-C. Zero res. Mom. Can I have some ice cream? I've got a better idea. Who wants to help me make something fun and healthy instead? Me! Me! Eating smarter is easy and delicious. Interested in receiving healthy recipes and a whole lot more in your email? Then register at healthiestweightfl.com and learn more about all the small steps that you can take on the way to living healthy. This message is sponsored by the Ounce of Prevention Fund of Florida, the Florida Department of Health, the Florida Association of Broadcasters, and this radio station. At Diamonds Direct right now, there's nothing standing in your way of owning that magnificent piece of jewelry. Nothing. No down payment and no finance charges for five whole years. People are driving for hours to do this. On any purchase, just take that amazing Diamonds Direct price, divide by 60, and that's your payment. It's a smart way to buy. Keep your money in your pocket and still get that amazing ring or band or bracelet. Even that bigger diamond. Five years, zero interest on any purchase on approved credit. Only at Diamonds Direct. Off Town Center Parkway. 
ESPN 690 Sports Center Update. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jake Mitchell. Obviously, the big news yesterday was the Jags releasing former first-round pick Leonard Fournette. Leon Searcy, former Jags lineman, wonders if maybe Jalen Ramsey was right about the team all along. And I thought I'd never say this, but I'm going to come to Jalen Ramsey's defense last year when he said that there was no culture of winning within the organization, and it's starting to look like that. Meanwhile, Doug Marone explains why he was released instead of traded. My question was, you know, can we get any value? And it was we couldn't, we couldn't get any. So I, fifth, sixth, no, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't get anything. And live from the bubble in the NBA last night, the Thunder pulled their series with the Rockets to three and three, making it even. Next game takes it, and the Heat took the first game in their series with the Milwaukee Bucks. If you're working from home and you want to listen to ESPN, no problem. Tell your smart speaker to play ESPN 690. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Austin Lane from Action Sports Jackson, ESPN 690. Social distancing doesn't mean disconnecting. If you're working from home, keep tabs on the world of sports and Action Sports Jacks on your smart speaker. Tell your Amazon Echo or Google Home, play ESPN 690. Brent Martineau. But we could really take this show off the rails if we wanted to go all, like, half politics, half sports. Austin Lane. I mean, have you been on Twitter lately? That's, do you, do you want 100000 extra $100,000? Do you want a scholarship? Let's go. <laughs> politics. We get back here. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. We were shocked about it. Um, he came in the room a couple minutes before our team meeting and let us know that he had got released. We didn't believe it. We thought he was joking because, you know, he laughs and jokes with us all the time and uh, it wasn't really until uh, Coach Marone said it in the team meeting that we really believed it. And, um, you know, it was a shocker for everybody. The mood was just different that day uh, or different yesterday at practice. But, you know, it's the NFL and we just have to rock with the decisions that's being made. That is Chris Thompson, whose carries and production probably is going up. Check your fantasy football leaks. <laughs> Check the waiver wire. Yeah. Speaking of the waiver wire, we'll see if anybody does pick up Leonard Fournette over the next little bit. Leonard Fournette waived by the Jaguars on Monday continues to be a dominant story, not only here in Jacksonville, but it's become a national story. And there's different twists and turns to the story. One about Fournette. And really a lot of it goes back to what about the Jags? Yesterday we said, are they tanking? Uh, and a lot of people believe they are tanking. You've been inside buildings and headquarters before, and nobody inside a, a locker room is tanking. We all know that. Uh, guys don't – they have jobs to gain and money to be earned. Uh, is it more of a front office thing to put you in position to be not so successful? Mm -hmm. I, I think almost the better question to are they tanking is are they trying to win? <laughs> and I know it sounds like the same. Yeah. But to me, there's a big difference because when you're trying to win – you're all in on trying to make the postseason, give it a run, get yourself in the dance, surprise some people. That's the way the NFL's built again now. Year after year, you try it. You're about eight and eight. Everybody's yeah. similar. There are a few good teams, few teams that are probably going through a restructure or a rebuild of sorts. That happens in sports. But the idea is everybody's kind of right in the middle of it, or a lot of them, majority. Mm. And then you put yourself in position for a couple of things to go right, a couple of new moves in the offseason, and boom, be there. Well, that to me is the question. The Jaguars are not in that position. They're they're not. They are closer to appearing to tank than appearing to try to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, that is fact. And we said it before Fournette, before Ngakwe were gone for a long time. The ceiling of this football team is not great, mm -hmm. even with Fournette. Expectations are very low. Very low. I mean, uh, you just can't say it enough. Where else in the NFL can you win seven games and exceed expectation and maybe exceed it by a mile? Yeah. I mean, that's reality. If Doug Marone wins seven games, I'm not saying the fan base is excited about it because he might be sticking around because he's exceeded expectations. That's where the expectations are at. And so I actually, I thought about that today. I'm like, okay, everybody's talking about tanking, tanking, tanking. And I don't, see, I have a hard time admitting that they're tanking when I believe a little bit in Minshew. So I, I'm just trying to be realistic and not try to be like, okay, now that they lost Fournette, even though Fournette was kind of a, a guy on that line for well, me. Well, listen, he, he was the barometer, I think, for everybody. He, he was going back to the draft. Yeah. And 
But now I've just I'm I'm kind of all in on Minshew being better than the national folks think, and and even with Fournette and Ngakwe, the national folks well maybe not Ngakwe, but the national folks thought two and fourteen was really where the Jags were going to sit, three and thirteen probably get the number one pick. I mean every mock draft, every analyst nationally basically has said the Jags are going to have the number one pick next year. Yeah, and so. My rebuttal to that was, no, I don't think they are. I mean, I think they're going to maybe win six games. I mean, they might win seven games. I think Minch. Now, I think they got hurt yesterday. I do. But I, so that's why I kind of reevaluate that question and be like, I don't think they're tanking because you tell me and everybody tells me players don't tank. No, right? players, players don't, don't tank try no. to lose. Not so they're one. going to try to win. Okay. I do have a little belief in Minshew. I believe their offense has some players where other people don't. I believe there's a lot of people playing in contract years. But now if you rephrase the question and say, Brent, do you think they're playing for the playoffs? Mm-hmm. Do you think they're playing because they got a chance to win? Do they feel that? Do they think that? Where every team should think that really at the beginning of the year, whether you have the most cap space or the least cap space, whether you have the most pro bowlers or not, you should believe that I'm, we're good and we're going to go win. Yeah. That's the belief that every team should have. Well, I'd be lying if I said yeah. yeah. Uh, I think their ceiling has always been maybe eight games if everything went right. I think their ceiling might have just dropped a little bit without Leonard Fournette. I don't know what he's worth. Is he worth a half a win, a win, two wins? But I think it just dropped a little bit more. And the bottom line is, if you ask me if they're tanking, I still hesitate. If you ask me, are they in position to make a playoff run? I say absolutely not. Yeah. Listen, and I can't drive this point home hard enough. No, the players in the locker room aren't tanking. And you know what? Whenever a player here's the words they're tanking that's like nails on a chalkboard i'm reminded back with mike malarkey's year back in it would have been 2012 yeah 2012 yep. um first and only we won two games <laughs> yeah first and only we won two games that year and obviously we heard it from the media you saw it in the newspapers you know the the, the jaguars are horrible they're tanking yeah, yeah like we were in that locker room brent having heart to heart saying guys if we don't pick this up we're all going to be gone and we might never get another chance to play in this league so we have to win. Like, we, we can't afford to lose these games because if we keep on losing these games, it doesn't matter how talented we are. Other teams may not give us another chance. And guess what? The turnover, you saw it. You saw, I mean, Avery Jones from when I played is the only player left on that team. And that's when, you know, obviously, Gus Bradley was there too and stuff. But Avery Jones is the only player left over. Yeah. Everybody else? gone and much like so, you others went somewhere else maybe got a chance but i would say but, three or four years later in the league they yeah. probably weren't there i mean honestly tyson tyson's one yeah um yeah i mean i can't think I of mean, a lot mercedes of them but, but mercedes and, sure sure there's, there's a couple of them there's a couple of them but so set aside from that though you're okay let's go back in time real quick and let's both agree on one thing you're a better team with Clayus Campbell than not with the Clayus Campbell. Then with the, with the fifth round pick, whatever you got from absolutely him, okay. From although Colin on, Johnson's pretty good, no, yeah, he's great, <laughs> man. We'll see after them. But from an on the field perspective to obviously a leadership perspective, yeah. you're a better team. You are a better team with AJ Boy on the team than maybe a fourth round pick. Now, once without again, question, we'll, we'll, we'll see who you get for that fourth round pick. We'll see how it pans out. But this year, yada, yada. But are this you better year, or worse? You're worse. You're worse, right? You are a better team if Yannick Ngakwe chose to play or play a couple games than you are without him this year. You would have been a better team if Leonard Fournette was on the team this year as opposed to just releasing him. That's fact, man. All right? I'm not – take the scheme out of it. That's just fact. So I just gave you four circumstances that you guys – the Jaguars made where they said, you know what, we're okay with losing these guys. So that goes to tell me that there's another plan in place. There has to be. That, that's the only way you can judge. I hope that's the case. Because if you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants right now saying, hey, get rid of him, get rid of him with no plan, then what are we talking about right now? So me, where I go, you know, knowing the game of football a little bit is the fact that there had to be a plan in place, even with the Clayus Campbell stuff, even with the A.J. Boye stuff, obviously with the Yannick Ngakwe stuff, and now with the Leonard Fournette stuff. Now, what that plan is, is it Trevor? L- I, I don't know, okay? I, I'm not going to speculate that. But all I'm saying is, there's definitely a plan in place, and that plan isn't to necessarily win ball games. That plan's not to go win a division. That plan is not to go to the playoffs or win a Super Bowl this year. That plan is something else. So if the plan isn't to win ball games, I'm sorry, man. It has all the characteristics. It has all the symptoms of tanking, and it's as simple as that. You just great, great illustration there, right? Because what I'm thinking of as you're talking about it, Calais, AJ, Jan, and, and uh, Leonard. Leonard, all yeah. right? What I'm thinking is, okay, that's 
I just did the math in my head real quick, and it's a give or take $55 million. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what, what are the Jags doing? Well, they saved $55 million, and they also got one, two, three, four draft picks in return. Sure. Three of the players, one they just let go. So that's what that is. Uh, is that what, what I would say is those four players, how many wins are they worth? How much better are you with them? I'm assuming those are the questions they ask themselves. Mm-hmm. Is it worth saving $55 million and trying to flip this roster a little bit at those positions? Is it worth getting more draft picks and, and, and capital in that sense to rather than getting two more wins or two and a half wins? See, or You just don't know what they put on it. But yeah. how many more wins? How much more... From a culture standpoint, a whatever standpoint, inside that building, are those four guys worth? And what they chose are basically it's worth having the fifty-five million yeah. and four draft picks moving forward as we flip this thing. Then for those four guys, I mean that's plain and simple. No, they chose sure. that. Well, and once again, though, and I, I don't just, know if they're right, but they chose well, that. No, they did. Cho- they, they did choose that. And once again, I just try to make the point of it's not only what you're getting on the field with those guys, but it's the veteran experience, it's the leadership that you're getting off the field as well. That if you're trying to do a turnover here, if you're trying to go to a new direction, you need those guys to bridge everybody else. We saw it with Gus Bradley. So then here's my point right now, Brent. If this is all the case right now, right, and we're talking about, well, you let go of A.J. Boy, you let go of Leonard Fournette, you let go of Yannick, well, you trade Yannick Ngakwe, and you traded Clayus Campbell. There, here's where I sit on it, and this is where we d- disagree. I think the job security of Dave Caldwell and Doug Marone has to be somewhat safe. Because in order to make all those moves, you have to have it in the back of your mind saying, well, you know what? If we want to get rid of all the, this veteran experience and we want to start brand new, we want to peel the Band-Aid off and start brand new again, you have to have some kind of job security to do that, right? Because if, if you're trying to play for your job right now, if you're trying to compete for a job and win ball games, how can you justify cutting all those guys or letting those guys go or trading those guys away and starting brand new with a brand new roster and it's supposed to be your quote unquote like year to prove if you're gonna be part of the job in the next couple of years or so. Like to me, it's hard to justify that. Now you think that you're setting the table for the next regime to come in. And that's where we disagree as well. But I'm just saying if I'm Doug Marone right now, if I'm Dave Caldwell and I'm supposedly fighting for my job, and this is the year to see if I can keep it or not, the moves that you made show you're planning for the future. How can you get by with planning for the future if you're supposed to win right now to keep your job? Yeah, I, the only other thing I, I say, and Sean's online, I'm going to get to him in just a moment, but the only thing I would say to that, and I've thought a lot about this, yeah. and I just think the way they pivoted, if you say to your boss, hey, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to be around for this, but this is the right thing to do for the organization. This is We're not close enough to winning. We have to do this and this and clear some space and get some picks and get younger people in here. And this is best for you, the owner, Mm -hmm. and whoever's in here. We hope we're a part of it. We're going to try to win as many games to save our job and make it look like we're on the right track. But this is the best thing to do for the organization. I don't know if you buy some equity with the owner by doing the right thing for the organization. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they did. Maybe Maybe it's a Hail Mary on their part to say, hey, just what I said. We might not be around, but this is the best thing to do the organization. And if we are around, it's the best thing for our future too, because we show we think this is the way to get back mm-hmm. to be where we're supposed to be. It's not to try to string this along and squeeze every ounce and every play out of Calais Campbell and AJ Boye at their age or at their price tag. Uh, I'm not trying to, by the way, say they're admirable for doing it, but they could try to play that way. And, and kind of win over the owner that way by saying, we think this is the best advice we can give you. This is the way to do it, even though it's not best for us. Yeah. That could go a long way. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. Sean's on the line. Let's get to him. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. What's up, man? How are you guys doing today, man? Good. So, Brent, what you you were saying something early in the show. You said that perception versus reality. I, my, thing, my question to you guys is with – Perception being that Tom Coughlin was this hard-nosed cancer that was in the locker room in the front office. Maybe with when you brought the analogy with Andy Reid, maybe Tom Coughlin was the Andy Reid in the locker room that could handle those personalities. Doug Marone came from a college background in Syracuse. He wants to build character and build guys, and the guys he has in the locker room now are those building type of characters. He probably couldn't handle the Tom Coughlin type of guys who Tom Coughlin, he's a hard nose five minutes, you know, before the hour you're on time type mm-hmm. of guy. 
So maybe he Doug Rome didn't ha- couldn't handle those type of players versus the players he has now. Do you guys believe that? I'm just that's my question. Sean, that's it's a, a great, great point, point, man. It's a really good point. Uh, good thanks question. for jumping on Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690. And I think that's a it's what's great about that point is to go back and remember how this thing was built. This was Tom Coughlin's team in 2017. And quite frankly, it was Tom Coughlin's team in 2018. By 2019, we saw this separation between Doug Marone and, and Tom Coughlin. And Doug kind of saying, I'm doing, I'm tired of dealing with this stuff or whatever, but I'm doing it my way. And we had the soft camp and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was the part of the separation from Tom, uh, if you will. But I think Sean brings up a good point. Tom picked Doug Marone because they, they feel like they're cut from the same cloth. Or at least their pedigree was that way. Yeah. But well, and maybe it, they're not. Yeah. And maybe they weren't. And he's got a point of saying, hey, it doesn't matter who we got in here. My job, Tom Coughlin, whether it was in New York or here in Jacksonville at the time, uh, in my first stint was to manage the egos, stuff sure. that you talk about. Does, I'll, I'll make sure if they're good players, I'll manage those freaking guys. Yeah. Right? That's what Tom Coughlin's going to say. And by the way, I'm going to get him to do what I want him to do because I'm the boss and I've got a, two Super Bowl rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Doug Marone might not have that. Sure. Doug Marone couldn't maybe say that. What's Doug Marone got to build on? The time in Buffalo? Mm-hmm. Did you see the... T- Things that were written in Buffalo. Didn't then so great in Buffalo. Well, so he doesn't have that cachet. That was a great point by Sean to say, hey, these aren't my guys. I'm tired of playing with your guys, and I'm bringing in my guys. Yeah. Especially if I'm going to fall off the sword here. So, listen, to fall me. Fall on the sword. Yeah. The, the, the biggest transition, and the, the call made a great point. So, the biggest transition from college to the pros in terms of coaching, in college, you're still shaping young men. Right, like you, you, yeah, you're coaching football, but you're teaching them about life, all this stuff, and and you, you're trying to shape them to be better people. By the time you get to the, the pros and the NFL, and you're a head coach, you shouldn't be shaping anybody. No, okay, like you're dealing with a bunch of grown men. Okay, so the last thing you want to do is to like try to shape somebody in your image what you want. Like to me, the job of a coach is to take all those personnel. To take all those backgrounds, all the upbringings, all those different belief systems, and just make sure they're focused at the, at the same task at hand. And win. And win. Obviously, winning is the most important thing. And where I think Tom Coughlin went wrong was that he tried to rule with an iron fist. Now, obviously, that worked in the early 2000s. It worked in the 90s. doesn't work today. We, we always talk about the modern era NFL player. just doesn't work. Because the modern era NFL player is going to always ask why, 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 why. Yeah. They're not going to be a good soldier. They're going to question everything that you do. So it's hard to rule with that iron fist. On the other side of the spectrum, though, you can't have it where it's like, all right, well, I want you guys to be like this. I want you to change who you can't do that either. Like, you have to understand that there's going to be different egos, different personalities, and you just got to deal with it. And you you have to build the culture where everybody can express themselves and be who they are. Because once again, I can't repeat myself too much here, but... Every single team that I've been on had some of those rough around that just guys. Yeah. All right. Every team that I was on had some of those guys was just kind of like, man, I, I wouldn't hang out with him, you know. But you know what? You make it work, though. Yeah. And I, I'm convinced you need some of those. You need some of those guys. Because usually those are the ultra talented guys. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. Right. Yep. And there's a reason you're putting up with them. Yep. So, prime example Pete Carroll, Andy Reid. Two guys who don't necessarily rule with an iron fist, I don't think, but understand that. Different players have different egos, different players have different personalities, but they find great ways to make them play together. And that's what it's all about. Well said. A really good call, Sean. Appreciate the time uh, here on Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690. We're going to get into Florida State. Name's James Blackman, the quarterback. Also, some good news coming out of some of the college campuses in terms of COVID-19. And could the Big Ten start? I want to get into that. I have one more thought, though, because Sean brought up perception versus reality. And what's really interesting is there's two different ways to look at this, inside the building and outside the building. Mm-hmm. And that's next on ESPN 690. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Austin Land of Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. If you didn't catch today's episode, I'm not mad at you, not even disappointed, but check out what you missed. What's, like, the concept? It's like mini games that you kind of compete, Battle Royale style, but it's mini games, and you just try to, you know, be the last one standing, essentially. Let me try this again. So what is the concept? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be English. <laughs> English. English. Check out our podcast on all platforms. Just search ESPN 690. Subscribe to our podcast. Thanks. Internal Revenue Service. When you owe a personal or business tax debt and can't pay, just hearing those three words brings feelings of fear and anxiety. 
I'm Jonathan David Suryash, Managing Tax Attorney at J. David Tax Law. Everyone knows that if you owe the IRS and don't pay, it's only a matter of time before tax liens, wage garnishments, or bank levies happen to you. The first step to resolution is our no-cost consultation. We take the time to go through your specific tax problems step by step. We explain exactly what your options are and how we will resolve your tax issue. J. David Tax Law is a local firm right here in Jacksonville, where only an experienced tax attorney will represent you. Our fee payment plans are affordable for everyone. If you have tax problems, call us now for a no-cost consultation at 904-507-4777. That's 904-507-4777. Or find us on the web at jdavidtaxlaw.com. That's jdavidtaxlaw.com. Peace of mind is only a click or phone call away. I never knew my home would become my workplace. I never dreamed it would be my child's school. And I never imagined my home would be under attack from an invisible enemy called COVID-19. This is why I trust SafeTouch Security. It's one app that puts me in control. My SafeTouch system allows me to control who's on my property, movement while the kids are at home learning their school lessons, who I speak with without even opening the front door, as well as home deliveries, my heating and air conditioning, door locks, and complete protection against the threats of fire, burglary, and assault. You know, you can even have control over your car. Know you are safe with the most up-to-date security system from SafeTouch. SafeTouch Security has been doing what others can't for over 35 years. Reliable local monitoring. No other company comes close to SafeTouch track record on guaranteed response times. Go to safetouch.com and find out how you can get zero down and free equipment with a lifetime warranty. That's safetouch.com. State license number EF0000233. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and school just isn't for you, earn while you learn by enrolling in the Clara White Mission Workforce Training, designed for 16 to 24-year-olds and no experience necessary. National certifications include culinary arts, OSHA, Hazwopper, forklifting, environmental training, and more. These programs are customized for low-income and disadvantaged. Make your way to the Clara White Mission Training Center at 613 West Ashley Street. Call 904-354-4162 or visit clarawhitemission.org. Been dreaming of subway tile and butcher block counters? Outdoor kitchens and pavers? Oh, honey. The weather's great and it's time to knock out those nagging home projects with a honeydew HELOC from One to One Financial, Jacksonville's hometown credit union. Borrow up to 90% loan to value and pay no closing costs. Best of all, we'll give you a free wheelbarrow. That's right, a free wheelbarrow. Apply today at one to one fcuorg Federally insured by NCUA. Just please, please, no more shiplap. Though no longer little, teens still need a lot of love. Yet teens in foster care have a harder time finding it, as 82% of foster families are home to kids 12 or younger. You can positively impact a teen's life as a foster parent. With help from Family Support Services of North Florida, you provide patience, love, and understanding, and Family Support Services will offer specialized training, resources, and a community of support. Take the next step at foster-now.org. That's foster-now.org. Let's take a minute and talk about your health, your good health. We can't take it for granted, and CGC Water would like to help. It's important to have clean, purified water in your home for your good health. CGC offers no contact sales and service appointments, and they've taken all the necessary precautions while in your home. Kinetico Systems from CGC Water remove up to 99% of the contaminants. Now that's taking care of your health. This month, get 50% off a K5 reverse osmosis system with the purchase of a Kinetico Premier Softener. No more filling the landfills with plastic from expensive bottled water. Instead, fill up on cleaner, safer water from CGC Water. We love it at our house. You can have it at your house. Get the peace of mind knowing your family is drinking great tasting purified safe water kinetico features premier softeners non-electric twin tanks that are super efficient and use less salt financing available with approved credit call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com cgc water treatment your local independent kinetico dealer servicing north florida and southeast georgia over 300 children in northeast florida are currently undergoing cancer treatment 84% of families whose child is tackling cancer will experience financial hardship. This is Tom Coughlin, and September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, which is represented by the Gold Ribbon. Go gold this September with the Tom Coughlin J Fund to help our neighbors and community members tackling this devastating disease. Visit tcjfund.org slash go gold for more information. 
there's a new modern patient-centered orthopedic practice in Jacksonville. We believe that the patient pays money for a doctor and should be seen by a doctor. Ortho Edge. They're getting the most technologically available medicine there is. Ortho Edge. You're going to get a much better experience with your physician. We all see our patients. Get the answers right away and more focused care and patients. Find out more about us at orthoedge.com. Ortho Edge. We're in the DePaul building attached to St. Vincent's Medical Center, Riverside. It's time for some straight talk. You know what covering your bases is in baseball, right? Making sure you have no holes in your defense. Well, that's the kind of coverage you get with Straight Talk Wireless. And you'll pay up to 50% less than big carriers and still use their same networks. Just 45 bucks a month gets you the unlimited plan with 25 gigs of high-speed data and 2G. No contract, no mystery fees. Fully covering your bases for 50% less. Straight Talk Wireless, only at Walmart. Savings may vary. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. Finding the next job is a big job, and that part of what you do is a little tough right now. Because of that, Lowe's for Pros is here to help. Get $400 in leads on us with a free one-year subscription from HomeAdvisor to connect to jobs that make sense for you. Sign up at Lowe'sforpros.com slash proloyalty to get started. Just one more reason why Lowe's is the new home for pros. Now let's get to work. Subscription and $400 lead credit subject to HomeAdvisor's approval and terms. Valid for new HomeAdvisor customers only. Lowe's loyalty required. More terms apply. Valid through 99 U.S. only. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904 600 4000. That's 904 600 4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. ESPN 690, the home of the Florida State Seminoles in Jacksonville. Duke goes down to defeat Florida State 79. Duke 74. The basket lays. Oh, it drops. It drops with 1.8 seconds to go. Here's the snap. Winston rolling right close to pass. It's caught. It's caught. It's caught. You'll hear Knowles football and men's basketball right here on ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio and the Florida State Seminoles. This is... WRKB Jacksonville. Listen live. I'm Christine Lisi. Here's what's happening. We get one last look at this postseason's incredible duel between Donovan Mitchell and Jamal Murray when the Jazz and Nuggets clash in Game 7 tonight, 8 Eastern ESPN Radio and the ESPN app, 8.30 Eastern on ABC. Murray and Mitchell each have two 50-point games in the series. The nod tonight goes to Denver in Game 7, explains first takes Stephen A. Smith. I just look at Jamal Murray as being the elite of a crew of dudes who can ball. I see Donovan Mitchell with Utah. It's Donovan Mitchell and everybody else. And I don't think that that's going to be enough to offset the onslaught that Jamal Murray is going to throw in their direction. Celtics and Raptors meet up in Game 2 of their second round series. 5.30 Eastern ESPN TV in the ESPN app. Toronto is down one game to none. NFL Bengals and running back Joe Mixon agreed on a four-year, $48 million extension. His The Law is the 3-5 to five morning line favorite for the 146th Kentucky Derby. Drew the number 17 post for Saturday's race. Honor AP 5-1 to one odds drew the number 16 post. Did you know that right now, GEICO is offering an extra 15% credit on car, motorcycle, and RV policies? That's on top of what GEICO could already save you. So what are you waiting for? Visit GEICO.com to learn more. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN690, a Cox Media Group station. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 and Jaron Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 with Brent Martineau and Austin Lane. I am very, very excited to see what the Knowles are able to do in year one under Mike Norvell. And it all starts with quarterback James Blackman. James Blackman has been through so many offensive coordinators. This is his third head coach, and he got thrust into action after DeAndre Francois got taken out uh, in the season opener a few years back. You know, Jimbo Fisher liked him as a prospect, but, man, this has been really tough a really tough go for him throughout college football, always having to change your schemes, always having to change uh, the way everything is set out. But if offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham and if Mike Norvell can put together an offense around him, I really like where Florida State is at. Chip Patterson there talking Florida State. Uh, I need music like that 
every time we talk. Absolutely. That was man. pretty good. That was a little pep in your stomach. Yeah. I saw you, Brent. James yeah. Blackman, the starting quarterback at Florida State. Mike Norvell's Norvell names him today. FSU at four is coming up. I want to finish off this thought, at least for now, on the Jags, uh, because it's been such a dominant story. And then we'll get to Florida State in a moment. Also got some news out of college football in terms of TV uh, announcements and when games are going to be played in times and also COVID-19 updates uh, in Gainesville as well. Uh, ESPN 690, your official Jacksonville station for the Florida State Seminoles. We'll have an update on the QB situation in just a moment. Sean, our caller from the last segment, thought brought up a good point, also mentioned that I had said perception versus reality. I think this is an interesting deal. What happens inside a building? I'll call it team headquarters. Mm-hmm versus what people are saying outside is never aligned or hardly ever aligned, right? There's things we don't know. There's things the fans don't know. There's blanket statements we all make and assume. Uh, That's where, like, the tanking comes from, right? I mean, just that tanking conversation is like, okay, everybody assumes tanking is now the thing. Like, if you don't say they're tanking, well, then you don't know anything. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that's the buzzword. The bottom line is, and this isn't me necessarily, but when you do talk to people inside the building, their reality of that notion is way different than everybody else's. From the players, because they're never going to do it or say it, mm-hmm. but even there's this thought that you always have a plan. Like, if you're in charge, you always have a plan, and you think your plan might work. Somebody did mention to me in the last uh, couple of days, the perception in the building versus the perception outside the building has never been different. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's interesting. You know, it's a, it's but, an interesting notion, but it's always different to some yeah. degree. But it's never been more different. Probably right. It's kind of that's kind of the thesis, though, of this entire offseason, right? The perception from the fan base is the offensive line. Man, you have to do better. Perception from the building is great offensive point. line looks great. Great we, point. We like what we see here. Yes. You know? It, and so there's been a couple of those situations, I feel like. That's a great point, and that lends to this point. Leonard Fournette, you let him go, you're tanking. Yes. Inside, it's like, damn, we're better off without this guy. Watch this now. I, I think we might win, right? Yeah. I think we I think we yeah. actually, you know, outside the building, Leonard Fournette just cost you two wins. Mm-hmm. Inside the building, Leonard Fournette just got us two wins. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, seriously, yeah, yeah. I'm not, this isn't like, I mean, this is what kind of like piecing everything together. Yeah. And here's the bottom line. And the problem with the Jags organization is, man, have they been wrong about the perception inside the building for a long time? Mm -hmm. That's reality. And heck, locally, we've been wrong about what the Jags might be, could be, should be Mm -hmm. in the past. The national perception, not only always right, but sometimes right in terms of what's going on. So everybody's guessing to a degree. There's a roadmap that doesn't necessarily tell you how the road is going to end uh, in, in the sports world and in football. But it, it brings me back to the Gene Smith days, if I'm not lying. And this is where this comes up to me. Man, when you start getting rid of Calais and AJ and people start scratching their heads and you start getting rid of... Uh, in Gakwe and things don't work out. And when you just release a guy like Fournette after three years despite his production, and when you say, you know what, we don't need Cam Newton, we don't need Jameis Winston, we got Gardner Minshew, uh, you know, we, this is fine. Uh, we have Nick Foles on the roster. Now let's trade him away after, after pen, spending $50 million. Uh, those kind of moves, those kind of things, and this ne- this plan that has transpired – it reminds me of Gene Smith just going and picking from the Colorado School of Mines and, and all these small schools. Those Murray States. Murray yeah, States. Yeah. But ye, not, not just once. Because mm-hmm. the Jags have had those. They've, they've picked from a small school here or there in recent memory. Yeah. But it was the lack of SEC picks, the lack of ACC picks, the lack of big school picks when everybody else was doing it and, and had better rosters and better winning percentages. Sure. And Gene Smith was trying to do it by picking the needle in the haystack, haystack and be smarter than everybody else. So, so here's, here's, one of, here's one of the brilliances of the game of football, but it's also one of the biggest detriments. And if you don't play the cards right, it's going to backfire right in your face. And when I say it, I mean it like this. 
thinking outside the box, okay? Gene Smith thought outside the box. Gene Smith believed that there was a bunch of untapped potential at small schools. And he thought that if he could put those that untapped potential with the right coaches, and he brought guys that obviously had a chip on their shoulder, went to smaller schools, he could get these Pro Bowl, all pro type players because they had the right mindset, they had the work ethic, and that's the kind of culture he was trying to build. What he failed to realize, though, is that when you bring in those small school guys, they don't play against prime competition. And they're probably a lower level skill level than a guy from the SEC, a Big Ten school, a Pac-12 school, you name it, right? So that was Gene Smith's detriment, was that he tried to think outside the box. And it's okay sometimes to take maybe one pick out of, you know, a Colorado School of the Mines or one pick out of a Murray State. But when your entire draft is built around that, you could have some problems. But that was Gene Smith trying to think outside the box. What we might have here in Jacksonville is, again, a situation where it's like, well, we know how usually NFL teams are ran. You have these egos, and you have some some kinds, you have these personalities. Let's just get every single guy that we want in our image, and let's just get a perfect locker room. And I, I don't want to call them choir boys because guess what, man? It's the game of football. You have to have some kind of balanced nature. You have to be a little crazy to play this game. Don't care if you're a quarterback. I don't care if you're Josh Lambeau. I don't care if you're uh, a punter. Like, you have to be a little crazy to play this game. So they're not choir boys, but let's just go ahead and get everybody that we want in our image. And if those people, whether it's Leonard Fournette, um, obviously Jalen Ramsey, even Yannick Ngakwe, if they don't want to buy in and if they don't really see the image, then we'll get rid of them, okay? Usually, I think what would happen in the NFL is if you had a guy like Yannick Ngakwe, if you had a guy like Leonard Fournette, even if you had a guy like Jalen Ramsey, you would find a way to make it work. You know why? Because the talent will outweigh the distraction. If you have Pro Bowl-type players, if you have all-pro-type players, if you have the best player in your offense, you find a way to make it work until you can replace that player with what you know could be the same amount of value. Haven't seen that yet, right? No. So with that being said, this is a situation I feel like where the Jaguars are trying to think outside the box and try to be pioneers maybe in how to build a roster. And what I'm afraid is going to happen is the same thing that happened to Gene Smith, where you're, you're going to outsmart yourselves. You're, you, you're going to go too above and beyond, and it's going to backfire in your faces. Yeah, and I think that's, that's – it. I'm not going to lie, it feels like that. That came – to me yesterday and I didn't get to it in elaborating but it does feel like what the Jags are doing while everybody else in the outside world that's why this ties into perception versus reality while everybody else is sitting and be like what are you doing mm -hmm. like what I, I told my buddy he doesn't even pay attention to the Jags I told my buddy in Rhode Island he's like, he didn't see it yesterday I don't know what the heck he was doing but he didn't see that they had waved Fournette and he's like I said yeah oh, yeah it was crazy yesterday they waved Fournette they did what <laughs> You yeah. know, but that is the reaction. Yeah. Because people don't do that. They sign that guy to a four-year, $48 million deal like Joe Mixon, who, by the way, also had issues that obviously oh, yeah. Cincinnati has been able to corral, fix, or he has, or and whatever. keep in mind, they're on a rebuild right now, in case you didn't notice. They just got their, we'll see, franchise quarterback. So they're, they're rebuilding themselves. And that same production, the Jaguars just said goodbye to. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, until you tell us, we're going to assume that you think you're smarter than everybody else yeah. because very few teams in the NFL, if any, would do this. Correct. The, and that's what's so different, right? The Ngakwe move and the Ramsey move, you're going to see it. Whether I know Antonio Brown's like the super example of this, like the yeah. wait, whoa, that's like the extreme. But it's not like you haven't had players. I mean, Chris Jones almost did it until they gave him a deal. Right, sure. so you have players that I, Minka Fitzpatrick did it, yep. got traded, mm -hmm. and so teams do that. Yeah, and, and you're going to lose guys like that. Yeah. But how many teams flat out cut the guy who had 83 percent of the snaps, two 1,000 yard seasons, 80 catches last year, touchdowns here, you know, all this stuff? N none. They and, don't. I mean, yeah. I it, the people don't cut that guy unless he just had this big run-in with police or there's something going on yeah. or he actually is detri detrimental to the team because he punched a player or something like that. Yeah. And it, and we until we get those kind of answers, this doesn't make sense. And the perception outside the building is you guys are morons. 
Yeah. And, and the perception is you guys think you're smarter than us, mm -hmm. but every time somebody's thought they were smarter than us, well, it's resulted in a 4-12 and 12 season. Listen, and to me, and it was a great Gene Smith comparison. And listen, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you, did he draft me? Absolutely. But did he go about things the right way? Obviously not. But at least with Gene Smith, like, you saw what he was trying to do. He was trying to bring in these maybe me, like these non-household names and try to make them into stars. And then when he brought in a Justin Blackman, obviously he took a risk there because guess what? What was the book on Justin Blackman even out of college? Some teams didn't even give him the time of day because they heard things about Justin Blackman. What did Gene Smith do? He's like, you know what? He's a damn good receiver. He's going to help us win games. We're going to roll the dice. I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. And you know what? Didn't pan out, obviously, what happened, what happened. But you know what? He risked it to win ball games. Bottom line is everything Gene Smith tried didn't work. Exactly. <laughs> but but at least I can sit here and say, you know what? Well, at least he tried to win. I mean, no, it, it, obviously it backfired in his face once again. And bringing in small school guys, number one, drafting Justin Blackman, okay. Th those are bad decisions. But you could see where he was trying to win. Like, you could see he was trying to go outside the box and try to win. I see what they're trying to do right now on this team. You're trying to go outside the box, but are you trying to win? Like, see, this is why I guess I would make a, a horrible coach or a horrible GM because I see these moves. I'm like, guys, we're not winning with this. Like, well, it, it's it, we're getting worse. Like, either you're getting better or you're getting worse. Now, maybe you're getting better for the future. Maybe you're getting better five years down the line. Who knows about that? I'm worried about right now. And after we make move after move after move on this roster, it's like, Guys, are we getting better or are we getting worse right now? Yeah, it's just, uh, it just depends on how you look at it. I, uh, we've seen it in sports enough to know we get what they're doing. Like, we can see the two-year window. Uh, the big problem with it's, – it's not that Jags fans can't see what they're doing, whether it does involve tanking or not. Yeah. It's that they don't trust them in the process of doing it right. Because when you do rip it down – I brought up Houston yesterday. And what you have to do when you're ready to go back up – yeah. is make a lot of good decisions. Mm -hmm. A lot. Like, I believe you have to hit on 70% of your decisions. or They got a 65%, 70% hit rate. Well, the Houston Astros go, look at who they drafted in the early rounds when they were stinking, and look who they got. Well, it's the makeup of their entire team, and now they've been perennial, perennially good for the last four or five years. Cheated, but that's whatever. Well, uh, cheated, but they also got some good free agents as well. Listen, though. at we'll this point, up. I'll take plenty of cheating here in Jacksonville. I have no yeah, problem with it. True, and listen, <laughs> the Astros, they, they built through the farm system, but they also added some key cogs in free agency as well. Well, that's where they are that. more like the Jags. See, the Jags did make good moves. We don't want to give them credit for it, but they drafted yeah. okay. Yeah. Listen, okay. they drafted okay. To the point where guys like Fowler, guys like Bortles that year in 17, sure. guys like Ramsey, they had moments that all came together and, and gave them moments. No, that now, year was fantastic. Well, not only that, 17, they added pieces. Boye, yeah. Darius, Calais. They hit on those pieces, much like the Astros hit on Verlander yeah. and some other guys they brought over. But I'm also reminded of the Julius Thomases. I'm also reminded of the Jared Odricks. Oh, you no, know, like I mean, they've had plenty of misses. Yes, so but I'm saying I'm in 17, 17, they no, had 17, you're the right. hits. You're absolutely right. And so what they're relying on here. What my point of this is, if you're going to rip the bandaid off to build it back up and let the 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 wound heal. Yeah. Well, you got to make a lot of good decisions. And if you take seven years of decision making here in Jacksonville, you don't ever put a lot of good decisions in the same sentence. You put one year, basically, of good decisions and a couple of sprinkles here or there of a DJ Chark and a Jalen Ramsey and those kind of players. But do they have enough proof in their resume to make consistently 65 to 70 percent hit this past year and now next year to build you back up to where you want to be? Again, Jags fans are smart enough to see what they're doing. We all see what they're doing. We know what they're doing. We've seen it work in sports. The problem is... It looks like the same people are going to be doing it that have failed before and have made poor decisions. That's the reality. Like, talk about perception of tanking, perception of building it back up, perception in the building, we're going to be better than people think, whatever it is. The reality is the people they've had in place haven't been able to make enough good decisions in the past, so people don't have the faith they'll be able to make them over the next two years. Sure. Yeah, it's that's really a good as point. simple as that. Yeah, it is as simple as that. I think it's simple, Brent. And what we still don't know, and some people believe, and this is, again, where we differ, mm -hmm. we're not 
I'm not convinced those still those people will be in place to make the free agent decisions and the draft decisions of next year. Correct. While some people believe they're already in place to make those decisions over a two-year period. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like when you have this many plans, it seems like, for the future, you do that in mind of the fact that, you know what, you probably have a little um, leeway of how the season goes. Absolutely. All right, let's shift over for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Got to be careful there. Shift (laughs) over for a couple minutes to uh, uh, college football. (laughs) Uh, FSU at four, of course, Florida State Seminoles. You can hear them right here on ESPN 690. Football and basketball season. It's coming soon, baby. We are getting closer and closer. Oh, we already had it, man. I was watching Austin beat Central Arkansas week zero. I know. How about that? They practiced social distancing on the first play of the game. Did you see 75 yards? I, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was close. Goal. Well, listen, and imagine me, Austin P, one of our biggest rivals at Murray State, was not a joy to watch them perform. It's amazing that there has been that, okay? Yeah. So that was on, what, August 29th? Yeah. And the SEC isn't going to play a game until September 26th. That is an amazing starting gap. Yeah. I'd say so. I mean, it just shows you how wacky things are. Yeah. It's the wildest schedule we've ever seen in sports, from NBA to Major League Baseball to everything else, but that's just another indicator of it. All right, James Blackman named the starting quarterback. Yeah. I think when we did the odds, right, we kind of agreed James Blackman's going to be the guy. Yep. You know who said James Blackman's the guy? Jimbo Fisher, yeah. Willie Taggart, and now Mike Norvell. Sure. I mean, this guy has nine lives. Yeah. I mean, he's. He, I mean, he's been. It's well, in a tough situation. I was going to say he's used up eight of them because of the <laughs> offensive line. He's got one more left. Stay healthy, please. That's the right choice, though. Most likely. I mean, listen, we're not at practices. We don't sure. know, but you go with what you know. If you're yeah. Mike Norvell and Chubba Purdy got hurt, and if if. If they went that way and he used this as a honeymoon year, I would have been okay with it. I'm okay mm-hmm. with that idea. In fact, sometimes I endorse that idea. If that guy's good and you think he's the face of your program for the next few years, even if you're going to take some lumps early on, much like a rookie quarterback, mm-hmm. I don't mind that, especially in a guy's first year as a coach. Yeah. Well, and listen, and he was my favorite to maybe overtake Blackman. Like, I always thought it was going to be Blackman just because he's a guy that has experience. And keep in mind, in a – in a pandemic type year where you don't get time to work the spring a lot and get your reps. If you're Purdy, keep in mind a, a first year guy, you know, that puts you uh, kind of behind the eight ball a little bit. So I always pictured it was going to be Blackman, but Purdy was definitely my favorite to upset him out of all that group right there. Just because Purdy was kind of me. He Purdy seems like Norbell's guy, right? Like Norbell coaxed him to come to Florida state. I think he's supposed to go to Louisville. Norbell talked to him and going to Florida state. So like going forward, Purdy seems like the guy and sometimes coaches want to make the precedent, right? Like, this is a new culture. This is a this is a new team. And I want to put my guy out there to showcase what we can do. But you go with the safe pick. You go with James Blackman. I'm not mad at that whatsoever. I think if you can keep him healthy, um, you know, it's a great decision. But once again, the offensive line, can can they stay healthy and can they keep James Blackman upright? That's the biggest question. Yeah, right it now. is. And, and Purdy, obviously, with the collarbone and, yeah. and out. And so that doesn't make any sense. Blackman makes a lot of sense. Uh We'll see. I mean, we've got an we, we've had an inconsistent Blackman over time. I mean, he he surprised some people. 165 pounds soaking wet in his first year coming off the bench, and he's been shoved into different systems. The Taggart thing. There wasn't a player that that seemingly got the best out of themselves under Taggart anyway. Uh, so now we'll see if Norvell can get something out of him. Norvell is is an offensive guy. We'll see if he does a better job than Taggart in terms of squeezing what he can out of Blackman. Uh, he's got a go-to weapon with uh, Tamora and Terry. So there obviously is a rapport there already. I think there's a belief in Blackman. There was last year. We go to usually go to the media days. Well, they didn't have it this year. But we usually go to Tallahassee. And you could feel it. Mm-hmm. You could feel uh, there's a trust in Blackman. But you're almost waiting for Blackman. Also, okay, is this all he is or is he going to hit another level? Yeah. And can Norvell get that out of him? Can a better offensive line maybe get that out of him? Can a different system get that out of him? Yeah. Uh, we'll see. The expectations well, in Tallahassee aren't awfully high. But they go with the veteran guy. Well, let me ask you this, Brent. Obviously, you look at the Florida State schedule. I think they got Georgia Tech off, off the bat. And it looks like they should be winning their first two games, right? So you get off to a pretty good start, and we'll see what happens after that. Yeah, and because the next one's Jacksonville, Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State. And expectations this year, I mean, I'm not sure, you know, I don't have my finger on the pulse of the Florida State Seminole fans. But I think expectations should be pretty decent, right? I mean, you're still Florida State, right? You're still getting some pretty solid recruiting classes. So you want to see wins, um, you know, and follow that tradition and everything like that. So with that being said, Let's just say that James Blackman doesn't pan out, all right? And let's say we're halfway through the season and you're in the panic button. Excuse me. Do you go with Jordan Travis? Do you go with a guy who has also been in that system before where you can kind of just, you know, ride him out for the rest of the year? Or do you bring in a guy like Purdy and do you burn 
possibly that red shirt and say, you know what, man, this is your team now. Go get them. Like, to me, that's the biggest question going forward. Where if it if you hit the panic button, Brent, do you go with the experience of Jordan Travis as your backup guy, or does Purdy come in and take over for Blackman? Well, depending on his health. His uh, health. At that I mean, point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it will. Or you know, they've got four quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, you know, on their roster. So we'll see. Okay, uh, yeah. Conversation for a different day. If they're not doing so hot, I would expect to see a different quarterback. I mean, I don't think there's going to be a long leash when you have a few healthy quarterbacks to pick from. Yeah. Uh, I think that will be. I don't think it's going to be a quick leash like halftime of the opener. No, it but, might not even be two games. But yeah. I would say by the end of the first month, you'll know if James Blackman's in it for the long haul or not. No, but my, my point is, is it worth risking the red shirt of Purdy, or do you go with like a backup like Jordan Travis who has some experience before playing? Oh, that, well, that's the other new thing this year. Don't really have to worry about red shirts. Oh, that's yeah, you're absolutely you're right. Getting the year. You get the year. That's so right. that's another so this bonus is a thing for. Yeah, that's it's, right. it's really a bonus for a team like Florida State that yeah. could run into that. Uh, and, you know, the red shirt anyway was a four-game thing. Now they had trans- moved it all the way over there. It's not your, t- your traditional red shirt anymore. And Correct. then on top of that, the coronavirus, COVID-19, changes that outlook as well for coaches yeah. because you can get that year back. So uh, the it, it'll be interesting strategy to see how it pans sure. out. That, that'll be an interesting thing. I mean, listen, it, at the University of Florida where Kyle Trask seems to be the guy, Emory Jones could jump in there and, yeah. and kind of spell him and they could run a two-quarterback system at times. But it looks like Kyle Trask is the guy. I don't know if that comes into play. At Florida State, where James Blackman looks to be still kind of a placeholder, mm-hmm. uh, that could definitely come into play in terms of playing some young guys and not having to pay for it with a year uh, this uh, this upcoming season. It'll be That'll be a fascinating strategy to watch uh, throughout the country. Anyway, uh, how about this in? Uh, this one in from the University of Florida. Since t- this is the COVID-19 testing update, since student athletes returned to campus on May 26th, all student athletes total tests for August 687. Mm-hmm. All student athlete total positives for August mm-hmm. one. Dang. By the way, they don't issue releases if the number was like 400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they do when it's 687 tests and one yeah. positive. Uh, since football student athletes returned to campus May 26th, 459. Uh, and yeah, by the way, I did the August numbers. The uh, the May 26th number that was 1,017 yeah. and 35 positive since may 26th gotcha the august alone was 687 and one that was for all athletes yeah uh one positive since may 26th for football players 459 tests 21 positive uh which still isn't i don't know if that's bad or good but it doesn't seem so bad uh may 20 since in august alone 298 tests no positive Hmm. so there's a lot of buy-in from the student athletes at least uh at at the university of florida it's great to hear now we haven't had those kind of results in alabama yeah i think now that's more the student body i think as well but notre dame north carolina has had issues you just saw today iowa had to close down their their strength training program again because too many players tested positive for COVID 19 so now they're like their training room is closed down until further notice okay at iowa by the way, we, I mean, I don't want to call it really breaking news here, but I saw you retweet it. We should probably talk about it a little. You want to get we will. I just want one more college thought right. just to uh, – well, and we got to take a break. But uh, I'll get to the Alvin Kamara stuff in a moment. And oh, also – I got goosebumps, uh, And also, there's, <laughs> yeah, obviously you want to get to it yeah. uh, right away. Coos, do you have the TV schedule in front of you? Uh, give me a second. I can try to pull it up. I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> Uh, we'll get to their grievance uh, fired by, filed, by the way, by Leonard Fournette. That is uh, just in, according to Adam Schefter, which is no surprise. Yeah. Uh, he wants his money. <laughs> He's trying to get that $4 million. Grievance gate part two? We'll see. Yeah. Um, again, I don't, uh, I'm sure that was Coughlin, but it also was Leonard in a loophole in his no, contract. For sure, so for sure. uh, that, was, that was part of it. What do you got, Coos? Anything? Nothing. I'm just looking at Alvin yeah. Kamara highlights right now. Thanks, Coos. Don't, Don't worry. Me. I'll host the show and hit Google at the same time for you guys. I'm watching Alvin Kamara highlights. It's all uh, good. Uh, all right, here we go. Noon start for uh, Florida and Ole Miss. Uh, I'll give you some highlights. There's no doubt it was a 3.30 start, even though it's been pushed back a week here in Jacksonville. 3.30 start for the LSU game. Uh, the That's in October 17th, by the way. That's a few weeks before Florida, Georgia. And we got a couple of TBDs as well. So they made some announcements. Noontime start the first couple of weeks for the Gators, 12 and 12. Uh, 3.30 starts for LSU, Florida, and Florida, Georgia. Uh, of course, that game will be on CBS 47. 
the uh, CBS and SEC schedule rolling out a little bit uh, here on a Tuesday. Florida State uh, football schedule. Come on, this isn't that hard, Coos. Uh, we've got Georgia Tech and Florida State, 3.30 on September 12th. Mm-hmm. And we also have Florida State and Notre Dame on October 10th. That will be a 7.30 game. So those are some of the updates when it comes to the college football, the big games. They didn't release all the the updates. Even Florida State, Miami is still to be determined. Uh, But Georgia Tech, Florida State, the opener will be at 3.30. And Florida State, Notre Dame, 7.30. You can hear both those games right here on ESPN 690. All right, when we come back, Mm -hmm. Josina Anderson reporting that Mm. the Saints are open to trading Alvin Kamara. Watching the highlights right now, Brent. You you, want to get on this? Careful, man. Do you, you want to see a glimpse of the future, possibly? Here's what I always say. What why? Why get Alvin Kamara? No, why are they open to trading oh, him? Oh, I got you. Because he wants more money. I know. I'm yeah. Just, but, oh, oh, okay. I got you. But, uh, okay, he wants more money, yeah. so it's good. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you give it to him, then, if you really value ah, him? Ah, I see where we're so going why, and, and here's a sincere question. Because we talk about the Jags in this, let's call it a two-year reboot of sorts yeah. in terms of the roster yeah. is now the time to spend. No. I mean, obviously But even not. on a Camara, if you can no. get that kind of talent, uh, depending for the dollars. Listen, is- you, you know how I feel about it, Brent. All right. The, the, the guy wears a nose ring and I like my music like I like my running backs. Alternative. That's all I'm going to say. All right. We'll talk more about it next. ESPN 6 night. Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau on ESPN 690 is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. On and off showers and thunderstorms developing today. Hot and humid otherwise with highs around 90 dropping into the mid-70s tonight. Join me beginning at 5 p.m. for CBS 47 at Fox 30 Action News Jacks from the First Alert Weather Center. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds. Hurry, it's the last time you'll get five years, zero interest this year. I never knew my home would become my workplace. I never dreamed it would be my child's school. And I never imagined my home would be under attack from an invisible enemy called COVID-19. This is why I trust SafeTouch Security. It's one app that puts me in control. My SafeTouch system allows me to control who's on my property, movement while the kids are at home learning their school lessons, who I speak with without even opening the front door, as well as home deliveries, my heating and air conditioning, door locks, and complete protection against the threats of fire, burglary, and assault. You know, you can even have control over your car. Know you are safe with the most up-to-date security system from SafeTouch. SafeTouch Security has been doing what others can't for over 35 years. Reliable local monitoring. No other company comes close to SafeTouch's track record on guaranteed response times. Go to safetouch.com and find out how you can get zero down and free equipment with a lifetime warranty. That's safetouch.com. State license number EF0000233. If you have a specific medical problem, you call a specialist. Broken leg? Call an orthopedist. Cataracts? Call an ophthalmologist. At Prime Men's Medical Center, our doctors specialize in ED and PE. Listen to Dr. Rabinsky, a renowned expert in men's health. I'm Dr. Rabinsky. If you're experiencing ED or PE, Prime Men's Medical Center has custom blended medications to help you last longer in the bedroom, regardless of age or past medical history, with no pain or surgery. In fact, you'll see results in the office guaranteed or your exam is free. Patients are now lasting for 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer. And best of all, treatments are affordable. Men, if Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra have let you down, call Prime Men's Medical Center for a private consultation with our highly skilled physicians. Call 904-206-8105. 904-206-8105. 904-206-8105. Right now at Diamonds Direct. Pick any piece of beautiful jewelry. Get the best price. Pay nothing down. And spread your payments over five years. With zero interest. It's the easiest and smartest way to buy. Five years, zero interest financing. And everything's included. From all engagement rings to all bands, bracelets, earrings, and pendants. Don't miss this encore offer for 2020. You can even finance the sales tax. Five years, zero interest. Now for a limited time at Diamonds Direct. Approved credit. Get store hours, directions, and details now at DiamondsDirect.com. A healthier you is the first step toward a healthy baby. When planning a pregnancy, baby steps toward better health can deliver big results. Exercising regularly and eating a balanced diet will help you reach or maintain a healthy weight and increase the likelihood of a healthy baby. 
Taking a multivitamin containing folic acid every day helps prevent birth defects, and regular medical and dental checkups are especially important when planning for pregnancy. To learn more about taking your baby steps toward a healthy pregnancy, call Florida's Family Health Line at 1-800-451-2229. Five years, zero interest has been extended. No other jeweler in North Florida can beat Beard's Diamonds. And now with their five years, zero interest financing, you can go even bigger. Save on everything. Rings, earrings, bracelets, pendants, wedding bands, all designer jewelry, all colored gemstone pieces, and all diamonds. Five years, zero interest. Now held over. Beard's Diamonds, located at the St. John's Town Center. Come in, see the difference. Save thousands. In these unprecedented times, nurses on the front lines continue to deliver treatment and care under some extreme medical and environmental conditions. I'm Glenn Levine from the law offices of Anna John Levine. If you are a nurse or other licensed healthcare professional and currently face an investigation or complaint that threatens your professional license, let us help you protect your rights. Call us at 904-600-4000 for a consultation and take back control of your life. Office in Jacksonville. The current coronavirus outbreak has caused difficulties for many of our area's small businesses. From losing customers to falling behind in payments, business owners need help. At SCORE, our highly trained counselors are here to help. In Jacksonville, SCORE provides services to almost 6,000 individuals annually. We are currently mentoring virtually and identifying possible financial assistance through the SBA and other resources. Visit jacksonville.score.org for links with more information. Is your business losing sales from the current pandemic? Are you trying to remain in touch with important clients? If you're struggling with questions like this, you're not alone. Many small businesses are currently in a severe crisis and need immediate assistance. As the nation's premier organization supporting small businesses, SCORE offers webinars on a variety of topics that can help you manage through this crisis. Click on the Take a Workshop tab at jacksonville.score.org and register today. When we see a chance to make a difference, we take it. Local doctors are conducting a vaccine study for COVID-19 right here in our area, and they need your help. Participants will receive all study-related care and either a placebo or an investigational vaccine for COVID-19 at no cost. They may also receive compensation for their time and travel. Volunteering for this study can help make a difference as we try to find vaccines to prevent COVID-19. Please consider participating in this COVID-19 study by applying at covidvaccinestudy.com. I never knew my home would become my workplace. I never dreamed it would be my child's school. And I never imagined my home would be under attack from an invisible enemy called COVID-19. This is why I trust SafeTouch Security. It's one app that puts me in control. My SafeTouch system allows me to control who's on my property, movement while the kids are at home learning their school lessons, who I speak with without even opening the front door, as well as home deliveries, my heating and air conditioning, door locks, and complete protection against the threats of fire, burglary, and assault. You know, you can even have control over your car. Know you are safe with the most up-to-date security system from SafeTouch. SafeTouch Security has been doing what others can't for over 35 years. Reliable local monitoring. No other company comes close to SafeTouch's track record on guaranteed response times. Go to safetouch.com and find out how you can get zero down and free equipment with a lifetime warranty. That's safetouch.com. State license number EF00002233. Hi, I'm Hunt Hawkins, CEO of Steinmart and chair of the 2020 First Coast Heart Walk. The 2020 Heart Walk is going virtual, and while we might not be able to meet in person, we still need you to support the American Heart Association's mission of being a force for a world of longer, healthier lives. Register and start a fundraising team today at firstcoastheartwalk.org, and then make plans to join us on Saturday, September 12th to Heart Walk where you are. Let's make a difference in the fight against heart disease and stroke. Register today at firstcoastheartwalk.org. Locally sponsored by Steinmart, Florida Blue, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, it's Goose from Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Now, I know there's a ton of ways you can listen to the show, but did you know one of the ways is through a smart speaker? Yes, the Google Home, the Amazon Alexa. It's pretty easy to do. Just tell either of them to play ESPN 690. Try it out weekdays from 3 to 6 p.m., and you can listen to Action Sports Jacks. Austin Lane. The Rock, out of nowhere, buys the XFL during a pandemic, mind you, goes half in with his ex-wife. So now you're going to visit with your ex-wife. Brent Martineau. I don't know if that's on the business advice list. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. 
James. I think he's one of those guys, to me, in my opinion, probably has the, the best vision out of all of us. And um, it's, it's been great to see um, a young guy like that be able to come in and, and be able to make the plays and hit the holes that he's he's been able to um, hit. And I'm excited. I'm excited for all the guys. Um, Nate, he's the fastest running back that we have right now and uh so i'm excited for him and his future and then raquel and and zig they're both guys that were here last year and now um you know with leonard not being here they're going to be able to get a lot more opportunities and uh from what i saw from what uh rock did last year and zig especially in that last game against the Colts, um i think they have those guys have a lot of potential and um you know, we're going to see here moving forward. Oh, Chris Thompson. <laughs> it says, because I, I, I got the TV guy, TV guys like asking me if we should be like doing TV on Leonard Fournette's grievance. Yeah. And then, so I'm like, who the heck was that just talking? <laughs> and because like, hey, dumbass, it was Chris Thompson. Yeah. That's basically what he said. Yeah, I mean, you could ask me. I, I figured. I, I don't know what you were trying to get his attention I, But for. I really didn't hear it. Yeah, I, I, and by the way, I think you started like two conversations with me during that break, and hey, I Bob, still didn't hear it. No, dude, I, I understand you're locked in right now with your stuff. I'm locked in to Alvin Kamara. It is what it is right I mean, now. I don't know. I mean, tw- grievance, uh, does, does the Leonard Fournette grievance stuff, does it even, it's so inside football. Yeah. It's like, the well, money stuff of football like that doesn't. Yeah, man. That's like anybody would have done that. Like oh, if, if you gonna... had, if you had get your money taken away, it's not like Leonard Fournette's doing something out of the ordinary. And was... it's, this is a formality in the process, right? Or am I or am I not no, making more I, of I a story? I was literally out? just going to ask you the question: If you had a chance to gain an extra four or something million dollars, Brent, would you go after it? The answer yes. would be unequivocally yes. Well, guess what? You're you're a grievance guy then. Congratulations. That's right. Even if you, you only get two, yes. right? Even if they split it in the middle Business or something. Man. Like yeah, like I understand. I, I think it's just like the word. Grievance. I don't even know if they can split it down the but middle. But it's kind of like the word grievance, right? Like it, it it carries so much pomp and circumstance. Like, Ooh, a grievance with the Jaguars. Like it makes it sound a lot worse than it is. Like this is a a usual business transaction here. Now what becomes of it? We'll we'll check it out and see when it happens. But it's not that big of a deal. But we, we nobody's coming from a mile away. This is like a tree falling in the forest, man. Yeah. I mean, nobody, even if he wins the grievance, nobody's going to care. No. Like, who can, for, it's not our money. If he loses or wins it, your season I'm tickets will not go up. Yeah, exactly. If they lose the grievance. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. No, no, for sure. <laughs> but, like, no one's going to be, like, scouring Twitter, like, oh, what's happening in the Leonard Fournette grievance case? Like, I don't think, unless it's Leonard Fournette or his family, I don't think anybody really cares. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Or I'm just agent. making sure. Or his I, agent. I, I will say this. I don't – there are so many technicalities and money and roster moves and all this stuff. I probably should know more of it a little bit better. Yeah. But listen, man, I'm trying to figure out my taxes and, and, and 401K. All right? <laughs> I sure as hell don't care about Leonard Fournette's. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> or Shad Khan's or and, Dave Caldwell's. And listen, I don't want to break your heart, and his is probably looking a little better than yours <laughs> yes, is. All is. right, because <laughs> those NFL 401Ks, man, oh, uh, so I mean, just juicy. ask Kuz. He's just trying to get his 401K so ramp back man. up. <laughs> Kuz, I'm I, so okay, he's, annoyed. See, it's annoying. I mean, and I, I like am, math. Kuz, I man, like I'm numbers. telling you, man, you should have played in the NFL because they do their 401Ks right. Well, yeah, I mean, chef's kiss. But like, listen, my, like, they do it for you. This is oh, all yeah. different. I haven't done like, anything. Like you had to call Vanguard. No, I, I didn't even call. All I had to do was I had to t- touch a button on my cell phone and boom, set it Imagine, it. imagine calling your 401k place and them going, oh, I don't you know were fired in December. And I was like, no, I'm literally in the building right now. So yeah. this is Oh, fun. no, man. I'm, I'm sitting in my ivory tower. Someone's doing that for me. You better believe that, dude. <laughs> exactly. I'm not doing that. Calling Vanguard. Uh, you kidding me? What is this? So Is yes, the 80s? Adam Schefter has reported that the that Leonard Fournette has filed a grievance uh, against the Jags. Just add it to the list. Yeah, well, I'm to gonna... try to recoup the four point one six sure. seven million dollars that the team voided. And, so. and, and you know what? And I might file one too because you're lying to me if you think that's a scheme thing with Leonard Fournette. So I feel attacked. I might file a grievance. We'll see what's up. You should have filed a grievance for your bonus money as a rookie. I know, man. You should have. Where were you when I? Yeah, I know. I would have done that. I know. You guys all should have got together and filed the grievance. Nobody, well, yeah, nobody, like, it was just like, ah, that's, that's the name of the game, man. You win some, you lose some. It must be, too. I mean, you, it well, must be nothing. Because somebody would have come to your corner. The NFLPA would have. Oh, I don't know. You, the you, bat you think you. my agent would have came to come to my bat? Think. Like, hey, we like taking, you know, 5%. Here, let us help you get a couple <laughs> hundred thousand more, <laughs> yes. and then I'll take it off the top. Like, yeah, that's right. yeah nice obviously. Christmas bonus. Exactly. Uh, hey, Alvin Kamara.
Yeah. You're drooling over there. Oh, man. Salivating. Salivating. Yep. Tell me, what do you think about him as a player? And do you think he – where do you go chase him? Well, once again, one thing about him as a player, I love him as a player, right? I love him because you look at him and he's very deceiving. He's he's kind of undersized. Obviously, he's monumental in the pass game. Um, he's a great pass catcher and running back, but he's got that dog in him as well, right? Where he can run between the tackles. He can run a zone stretch. He, he can do anything that you want him to. Now, it begs the question, do you see him as a true – bell cow like three type down back running back or do you see more as a third down back that begs you know i mean that's actually a legit question because last year he had an injury a little bit so there's a little red flag there i just like him from the standpoint of the guy runs with bad intentions he plays bigger than he is and he's a threat to always take a yard that's why i like alvin Kamara. this just in from charles robinson by the way on the alvin Kamara situation with the saints he's told that right now the team is comfortable making him a top five paid running back 12 plus million per season but Kamara's numbers pushing more towards christian mccaffrey territory at 16 plus million per year that's pretty wide chasm i can tell you this the jaguars are not paying alvin Kamara 16 no, no. million dollars well, they're not paying a running back 16 million dollars i guarantee you that and and here's the problem with it right and it's not alvin Kamara's fault but let's call it like it is here alvin Kamara last year yes he had that knee injury right but alvin Kamara last year he was the bell cow now, you had Latavius Murray, who was more like, you know, the bruiser type back, but Alvin Kamara was the three down back, okay? And to be fair, probably had his worst year of his NFL career. If you go back to his first and second year, like his first year, for instance, his first year on the scene, when he exploded on the scene, nobody knew who Alvin Kamara was. This weird guy with dreads and a nose ring. Who's this guy? Why? Because he had Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram was kind of the guy that pounds the rock. But then you would spell him out with Alvin Kamara, kind of like that thunder and lightning combination. You got Alvin Kamara in the pass game a little bit. Well, then that's when Alvin Kamara burst on the scene. So it still begs the question, can Alvin Kamara be a three-down back? Chris McCaffrey, definitely a three-down back. Chris McCaffrey touches the ball like 50 times per game. The question is, can Alvin Kamara do that exact same thing? I don't know. Is Alvin Kamara the closest thing in the NFL to Christian McCaffrey? No. Saquon Barkley. Ah, and, I, and I'd probably even say Ezekiel Elliott over Alvin Kamara. Really? Yeah, just because, listen, I've seen Saquon Barkley. He's been the leader of that offense. I've seen Ezekiel Elliott. He's been the focal point of that offense. Alvin Kamara, you had Michael Thomas. You had Marvin Ingram. Um, you know, you have some tight ends. Like, and you obviously got Drew Brees as well. Like, once again, it's just, do you pay $16 million for a guy who you're not positive if he's a three down back. Well, no, you don't. Yeah. I don't so, even think you pay sixteen million to a guy if he for is anybody. a three down. Back. <laughs> for anybody. No, I mean I really for don't any running back. That would yeah. be a I mean yeah. you, here's the here's the crazy thing, okay? The the news in Jacksonville is the Jaguar I mean the story around Jacksonville, the Jaguars, uh, around the country, yeah, is the Jags are tanking because they got rid of Fournette. Like, that was the move that put this over the top. It wasn't because, but it was the move that put the cherry on top to say, Jags are tanking. Trevor Lawrence, Dabble Swinney, come on down. The crazy part about it is, let's just say, for fun's sake, they go trade a second-round pick because now they have two in the Yannick and Gakwe stuff. Mm -hmm. And they got Alvin Kamara, right? There's no way they would trade a first-round pick for Alvin Kamara. I mean, you can't. No, listen, I love Alvin Kamara. Don't love you that much. No, so yeah. let's just say. Yeah. Took a second-round pick, they traded away. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Then they sign Kamara for a $14 million four-year deal. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. listen, no, no, Mixon 14, just got yeah. four for 48. Yeah, no, you're so okay. So from yeah. Kamara's standpoint, I would say if Mixon's getting four forty eight, no, I do yeah. deserve $14 sure. million. Sure. What was, would be crazy is the view in Jacksonville, all of us or beyond, would change. They just replaced Fournette with Kamara. Yeah. And all the stuff we said, they put Minshew in a position to fail. They put him in a position to succeed. Oh, He's in Jay Gruden's oh. offense. He's a good fit. You can throw it on the backfield to Kamara. Isn't it crazy how you could change that dynamic? The perception would change and, and so much. And by the much. way, now, if you plan on trying to be good like or really compete next year, I'm not saying like Super Bowl good, yeah. but really compete next year, well, that's the second year of Kamara. The problem with the vision is, can you get that third year out of Alvin Kamara in 2022 mm -hmm. when you really think, again, this is if everything goes according to plan and everything you hit on the 70% of, of moves you make, is Kamara going to be this good? That's what, now you're number six for him. Yeah. Is it still worth $15 million a year? Whatever it is. 
it's fascinating. Yeah. I just don't see it happening. Uh, if this was next year and Kamara came free, second round pick and then fourteen million a year, I, I'd say okay, the Jags are ready for that. Yeah. But I, I don't know. This one makes you better right now, gives you a chance, and also could keep him around for three or four years and still the prime of his career. I just think that if you had a a road grader, a bruiser running back to pair him with, that would be the move. Like if you still have, if you had Leonard Fournette still, and also you try to coax Alvin Kamara to Jacksonville, Brent, goosebumps are not going to go anytime soon. Like I, I would be literally if that happened, you had Fournette and Alvin Kamara, I would get up, leave the show, go run out in the rain and say, "Let's go, man!" I'm, I, I'm leading the sunshine and, and rainbows bandwagon. Like. Forget you, Brett. No offense to you, but I, I would. This is Sparta kick you into a pit, and I'd be like, I'm the new captain now of the Sunshine and Rainbow, just because I would be so excited. Because it would remind me of what they had in New Orleans with Ingram and Kamara. Now, maybe I'm not saying Leonard Fournette is Mark Ingram, but it's comparable, man. Okay, it was the way they run, the way they can lower their shoulder, it's comparable. Now, it's not going to happen. Leonard Fournette's gone. I just listen. I love Alvin Kamara. I'm a big Alvin Kamara fan. He's won me fantasy football leagues. I appreciate the guy, but once again, it begs the question, can he be a three down back? And we haven't quite seen it where it's like, you know what? Let's give him that Christian McCaffrey type of money. I, I, I understand. I, I don't think right now you need a three down back. If you're using the first two downs and you got Chris Thompson on the third. Down. <laughs> no, but you know, that's true. But at the same time, Brent, I mean, listen, what makes Alvin Kamara so great is his threat. I know. And, and the receiving game yeah, as well. That's I where mean, you want him on that third uh, down. Uh, I'll be honest. I'll be more comfortable if you had Rock Armstead. You know what you had with Rock Armstead? For maybe first, second down, you bring in Alvin Kamara a little bit. Now we're talking. You know, it would boy, would it change a lot of what you're thinking, though, here in Jacksonville if you made a play for, like this. Oh, it, it would just help Minshew, man. And not yeah. only would it help Minshew, but it would also help the feeling in there and say, hey, we are really do we really do have a vision, and we think we are better off with a guy like Leonard Fournette. What would it say about Fournette? Could have yeah. kept Fournette for $8.6 million, but no, we'd rather have this guy for $14 million. Sure. Why? Because we don't have to deal with the – whatever mm -hmm. you know it would put an exclamation point on that and not it wouldn't point to tanking it would point to that guy was bad for our team's success yeah uh so and well, this would kind of really jump start a build over the next couple of years to say okay now you're starting to see players come in and yeah. we still have 70 million dollars under the cap next year and we're going to bring more players in we still have nine draft picks we're going to bring mm -hmm. more players in well, it would be a it would be a great message point it'd be fantastic to go after a guy like this and really build around him yeah in essence. And, and listen, maybe you did that with, with Joe Schobert a little bit, but let's be honest here. Right? No. And, 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 well, no, but I'm, I'm getting my point here, Brent. You might do that a little bit with Joe Schobert with how much money you paid him, right? You moved Miles Jack from middle linebacker to outside where he's more comfortable. Like, you made some, you know, some big moves there, but it's Joe Schobert, right? And no disrespect to Joe Schobert. He could be fantastic this year, but people don't play, play fantasy football with Joe Schobert. People play fantasy football. People watch the touchdown, the highlights of Alvin Kamara. So I think just from a hype perspective, from a, from a, an excitement perspective, well, what do we talk about this Jaguars offense? Well, what have we had this past decade of offensive production? Not that much, man. Right? Nothing at all. No. So you bring Alvin Not Kamara even in. Fun. You bring in Alvin Kamara, it's like, oh, all of a sudden we're like the new kids on the block. Now all of a sudden we're Now you good. have LaVisca Chenault, and you have DJ Chark, and you it have would, Minshew, and you have... Be, you know what, Brett? Too many screen passes. It would be, it, it'd be way too many screen passes. I would overdose on seeing too many screen passes. Here's the thing. Uh, what's interesting here uh, to me, uh, as I say this, why do I feel like Kamara is so much better of a fit for Jay Gruden's offense, even though we kind of agree that if you're a good player, make him fit. But yeah. he, he, he does seem like he's a way better fit in my mind and kind of what I see him do in New Orleans for Gruden's offense yeah. than Fournette was. Fournette's going to run the ball 2020 whatever times a game to get going. See, Kamara doesn't strike me as that guy. He's more home run guy. Here's the, you know, you're absolutely right. And here's the thing. I think from Gruden's perspective, he's right up Gruden's alley, right? Because back when they had like Darius, Darius Geis, um, I forget who the other running back was, but like they had a couple guys who were kind of third down, back, or three down backs. Well, I think Geis got hurt. Then they got after Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson was kind of a shell of himself when he went, came to Washington. Now, yeah, still no had a doubt. good career and everything like that. Still, he actually did better than people expected the well. there. But I think. let's be honest. Like, in the receiving game, how good is he really? So I think Gruden would like Camaro just because you can do a lot of things with him. You can put him in the slot. You can put him behind. You can screen passes. You can run off the tackle, stretch plays. Like, you can do everything with Alvin Kamara. And if you're Jay Gruden, that's what you've always wanted, but you never really had. Here's the problem with the Jags right now. They have a ton of cap space. They have a ton of capital. 
they could go get one of the most exciting players in the league, potentially, or at least yeah. make an attempt. Yet we're sitting here and we know they're not. No, no. Like, we don't even think they're interested. He's probably going to the Steelers or something like that. That's sad. That part. What no. I just said. I don't even think they're interested. No. I mean, the fact you spent about 10 minutes talking about it seems like it's all for nothing, but now I'm sad. I Maybe was I'll change my mind in the commercial break. I we'll gonna, see. We've I got an hour to go. I in the pit, and I was going to take over the Sunshine <laughs> and Rainbows Club, and now I'm just back to being depressed again. Mm, we've got more to come on ESPN <laughs> 6 night. What about the Big Ten? We'll get into that more on the Jags, more on Camara. we got an hour to go. It's on ESPN 6 night. Everyone, this is Brett Morneau from Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Hope you catch the show Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on 10 different platforms. But if you missed the show, you missed this. The Jags have two opt-outs. How big are these losses in your opinion? Lorenzo McCray is different to me. This is a guy who's going on a seventh season here in the NFL. If you have the honor to wear the C in that locker room, it means that you're a leader. You have some sort of influence on that team. Subscribe to the podcast and check the show out on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Get the podcast daily. All you have to do is search ESPN 690 in your podcast app. Let's take a minute and talk about your health, your good health. We can't take it for granted, and CGC Water would like to help. It's important to have clean, purified water in your home for your good health. CGC offers no contact sales and service appointments, and they've taken all the necessary precautions while in your home. Kinetical Systems from CGC Water remove up to 99% of the contaminants. Now that's taking care of your health. This month, get 50% off a K5 reverse osmosis system with the purchase of a Kinetical Premier Softener. No more filling the landfills with plastic from expensive bottled water. Instead, fill up on cleaner, safer water from CGC Water. We love it at our house. You can have it at your house. Get the peace of mind knowing your family is drinking great tasting, purified safe water. Kinetico features premier softeners, non-electric, twin tanks that are super efficient and use less salt. Financing available with approved credit. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. CGC Water Treatment, your local independent Kinetico dealer, servicing North Florida and Southeast Georgia. Let's say you have ED, male impotence, or maybe you suffer from PE and can't satisfy your partner. If you have either or both of these embarrassing conditions, Prime Men's Medical Center has the solution. Meet Dr. Rabinsky, a specialist in men's health. If you're experiencing ED or PE, Prime Men's Medical Center has custom blended medications designed just for you. There's no pain and no surgery. If you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or prostate issues, not a problem. If Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra have let you down, Prime Men's Medical Center has patients lasting 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer. You'll see results on your first visit guaranteed or your visit is free. And best of all, it's affordable. For a private consultation with our highly skilled physicians, call 904-206-8105. We guarantee that you'll see results on your first visit or there's no charge for your consult. Call Prime Men's Medical Center now at 904-206-8105. That's 904-206-8105. It's always smart to shop at Diamonds Direct, but right now it's smarter than ever with five years zero interest financing and no money down on any purchase. No kidding, it's the best offer ever. Keep your money and finance the entire purchase, even the tax, for five years without paying a dime in interest. Get a $10,000 certified diamond for only $168 a month. I'm telling you, this makes fine jewelry more affordable than ever. It's definitely the smart way to buy. On approved credit, details at DiamondsDirect.com off Town Center Parkway. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and school just isn't for you, earn while you learn by enrolling in the Clara White Mission Workforce Training, designed for 16 to 24-year-olds and no experience necessary. National certifications include culinary arts, OSHA, Hazwopper, forklifting, environmental training, and more. These programs are customized for low-income and disadvantaged. Make your way to the Clara White Mission Training Center at 613 West Ashley Street. Call 904-354-4162 or visit clarawhitemission.org. This is Tom Scared for the Borgen Project. Each year, nearly two million children die from preventable diseases. Each day, 30,000 people die from hunger. 500 each hour are children. The Borgen Project is turning this around. We need your help. To learn more, go to borgenproject.org. That's B-O-R-G-E-N project.org. Hey folks, Dave Benyon here with Zero Res. 
Can you believe that it has been 16 years since we started our little business? It has been wonderful meeting and serving all the good people of Jacksonville. My wife and I got into Zero Res because of the amazing powered water technology that set them apart from all the other carpet cleaners. Powered water has proven to be very effective over the years at cleaning carpets, tile, upholstery, rugs, and more. Zero Res is also proactive at developing and testing new equipment to provide the very best cleaning results possible. It's fun to be part of a company that is always trying to get better. For September, we are going back to our original price from 16 years ago. Three rooms of carpet clean for only $99. That's the hottest price of the year on carpet. So give us a call at 287-5727. Zero res spell forward or backwards. It's the right way to clean. C-E-R-O-R-E-C. Zero res. When we see a chance to make a difference, we take it. Local doctors are conducting a vaccine study for COVID-19 right here in our area, and they need your help. Participants will receive all study-related care and either a placebo or an investigational vaccine for COVID-19 at no cost. They may also receive compensation for their time and travel. Volunteering for this study can help make a difference as we try to find vaccines to prevent COVID-19. Please consider participating in this COVID-19 study by applying at covidvaccinestudy.com. Are you now worried about how to continue providing the same level of service to your customers? Many service-oriented businesses are struggling to create new ways to maintain their customers. What happens to those that haven't been able to adapt? At SCORE, we can help by offering advice and resources through a vast library of online information and timely webinars. Since 1964, SCORE has assisted more than 11 million entrepreneurs and small business owners. Go to our website, jacksonville.score.org, to see how we can help you today. It's time for some straight talk. You know where the full court press is in basketball, right? Full defensive coverage with no holes. Well, that's the kind of coverage you get with Straight Talk Wireless. It runs on America's best networks, same as big carriers, but for a lot less. Just 45 bucks a month gets you the unlimited plan with 25 gigs of high-speed data, then 2G, for up to 50% less than the big carriers. No contract, full coverage, 50% less. Straight Talk Wireless. No contract, no compromise. Savings may vary. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. This is the Frost family. They live on a piece of land they call Greener Pasture, and they work on it behind the wheel of a John Deere 1 Series tractor. With its durable construction and features that hook up to dozens of attachments with ease, no job is too tough. The Frells family runs with us because this is more than just land. It's home. Nothing runs like a deer. Get a 1 Series tractor for just $99 per month at your John Deere dealer today. For additional cost information, please call toll-free 855-633-2315. This is SportsCenter. I'm Christine Lisi. One of the most entertaining series in these NBA playoffs comes down to a Game 7 tonight with Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz taking on Jamal Murray and the Nuggets. 8 Eastern ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. 8.30 Eastern on ABC. Murray and Mitchell both have two 50-point games in the series. Making those players uncomfortable is the determining factor for tonight's matchup, believes ESPN's Mark Jackson. I'm not willing to, to lose a game seven if I'm Utah to Murray and if I'm and if I'm the Nuggets, I don't want to lose it to, to Donovan Mitchell. They have to force other guys to make plays because these guys are in an incredible rhythm right now, knocking down big time shots. Mark Jackson with Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahenty. Raptors Celtics meet in game two of their series. Tip off bottom of the hour, ESPN TV and the ESPN app. NFL, one day after being waived, running back Leonard Fournette officially filed a grievance against the Jags, trying to recoup the $4 million in base salary the team voided. The Bengals and running back Joe Mixon agreed to a four-year, $48 million extension. Brought to you by Cooper Tires. Go with great tires that do what tires should do and cost what tires should cost. Go with the Coopers. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904 600 4000. That's 904 600 4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN 690, a Cox Media Group station. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 with Brent Martineau and Austin Lane. 
you know, hopefully I'm able to do uh, everything that I possibly can um, and maybe even get more running opportunities uh, when we get here and play the Colts in, I think, 12 days or so. Uh, with, with Leonard being out, we just all, as a group, we just don't know how those things are going to work out. But um, in 2017, I was kind of in a, in a similar situation where um, I had to take a boat uh, or a load of um, the carries and or I just say the plays in the game and for me I thought it worked out well up until my injury so uh, I'm excited for the opportunity if it's there that is Chris Thompson I'm excited to see Chris Thompson play especially on third downs we're excited to see the screen pass return to Jacksonville yeah still a part of football been a long time coming so that's good I think we've got to be a little careful with the expectations we put yeah on Chris Thompson and really this running back room. If you take a look at what the Jaguars did uh, last year in that finale, if that's the one-game sample that really got the Jags thinking they don't need Leonard Fournette and they're going to change the philosophy, well, they scored in the 30s that game. They really put a thumping on the Colts, and they only ran for, I think, 50 yards in that game. So is that going to be the Jags? I mean, are they just going to run for 50 yards a game? I mean, 60, 70 I yards mean, a game? I mean, are they going to even try to get 100 yards in a game? I mean, unless you get an Alvin Kamara type, you know. I mean, and once, <laughs> I'm going to say this right now, Brent, and I'll put it out in the airwaves, Coos, feel free to save this. If the Jaguars, for some reason, in a blue moon, they do something exciting, and they do something to give us faith, and they go after Alvin Kamara and they sign him, I will pierce my nose, just like Alvin Kamara has, on a septum. I, I, it's called a septum, right? Septum piercing right here? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think it's called a septum piercing. Sorry. I will pierce my septum on live radio. I'll bring somebody in, and I will pierce my nose if they sign Alvin Kamara. There you go. Interesting. Yep. You know, I never did read all the comments. We had so many comments, but I want to get to a couple comments yesterday uh, from the Leonard Fournette, Yannick Ngakwe, the two days that were emotional in Jacksonville. We had some callers. Uh, phone lines always open. 904-362-9901, star, star, 690 as well. Uh, but we also had a lot on social media. And uh, I really hope Minshew is good, said, we've been waiting for hours for this link to drop. A train, I've got $100 towards your FCC in your name if needed. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that, man. You survived the day. Yeah, $100. That's more, that's more than I'm making a day. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm kidding. Bob says, I'm ticked off about spending 120 bucks once again on a jersey wasted at the stadium. <laughs> Did you see that viral video of the guy going through the closet of all the players that have either been gone, cut, uh, or yeah, traded? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. You feel for him. Um, that is uh, pretty good, yes. No doubt about it. All right, what else we have here? Uh, <laughs> I think I read this one, but I'm going to say it again because I liked it. Brent, you almost did it, but you bailed on me and made it a question. Say it with your chest. The Jags <laughs> are tanking. <laughs> Is that, is that's in your contract, isn't it? You can't say they're tanking. Yeah, yeah I don't it, know. It's in your contract. It's all right. Uh, I get it. How about Robert Six, though? You ready for this? Hit me with it. I didn't see this yesterday. I just saw it now. Okay. I wanted to go back. I appreciate everybody jumping in, and we love the comments, and I just didn't have a chance to read them yesterday. Uh, but he says, what if they're just setting up a deal to get Kamara? So this yesterday? He said he yesterday. This is back when Kamara was even By the way, talking. we're hiring this guy. What? This if they trade, some, for, hey, if they trade for Kamara. Hey, Michael Lombardi, kick rocks, because we got some <laughs> true inside information right here with this dude. Okay. Mo says we'll end up regretting this move. He will go to another team and dominate with a team that actually knows how to use him. Well, I don't know if the Jags misused Leonard Fournette. They sure as heck used him a lot. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's in there. Yeah. Listen, I would go through my mentions, but they all tell me how much I'm right and how much you're wrong, so I don't want to do that to you right now. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. How much I'm wrong? How, how much you're wrong, how much I'm right. What? Uh, why do they say that? I don't I don't know, man. I, what can I say? I'm a man of the people. You know how they don't tag me? Yeah. They're afraid. Oh, no, they didn't take you, man. Yeah, they're afraid. And, and some of your friends didn't take you in some. <laughs> What's up, First Coast? Hey, First Coast Bubbler. I see you out there, man. I see you having my back, man. Uh, Michael says, what else would you call it in, in terms of tanking? Sad if they think Lawrence will save them. Got to dump this front office now. Everybody uh, believes in that. What about, did you see the storylines about the, the suggestions about <laughs> Lawrence and Dabo? Dabo. Oh, man. I mean, if you want to light a place on fire, by the way, in terms of excitement, would that do it? Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to cover Dabo Sweeney. You know, like, I, I don't know, man. Like, do you, is he a great coach? Absolutely. Obviously, the, the proof is in the pudding. He's had success at Clemson. Do you think his style would translate well to the NFL, Brent? 
I, I hesitate to think that yeah. those guys ha- translate to the NFL. I mean, Kingsbury, the, the jury's still out. Pete sure. Carroll is the most successful one or one of the most successful ones. Yeah. Uh, we have examples of it. We're going to now see in, get it done. Uh, we're going to now see in Carolina. Matt Rule. Uh, with Rule. Um, again, there's there's not an I – mean, listen, Doug Marone coached in college. Sure. And, I mean, he got the AFC championship game. Yeah. Uh, but he's kind of considered a more pro guy. Yeah, uh, even though he spent a lot of time in college. Listen, so I, I, I wouldn't see Doug Marone dabbing uh, at Syracuse during halftime. When you know, <laughs> I, I don't see him dancing in the locker room. Let's just say that much. Yeah, uh, kind of so, like Dabo does. The yeah, I don't know how it would work. I yeah. I don't get excited about college coaches going over to the NFL. Now I say that, and this is probably the best time in the history of the sport for college coaches to go over the NFL because there's more likeness now from the NFL to college game, the spread, the use of the quarterbacks, the dual threat, all that. And and so they'll bring – they'll get away from the dinosaur age of it. Uh, And obviously the rapport with the quarterback would be already there. Yeah. Quite frankly, I don't know if Trevor Lawrence wants it. I'm sure he loves Dabo, but does he want Dabo for the next eight years? Dude, I'm going to be <laughs> honest. So th- th- that actually happened to me, right? So my head coach from Murray State, uh, Coach Griffin, so he got let go my senior year, ended up becoming the tight ends coach at Jacksonville my, my rookie year. So I had to go against him every single day in practice. It was weird, man. It was a trip. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Yeah. You can spend too much time. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm something. not saying it was bad. It was, I'm saying it was weird. I mean, I, I enjoyed it because I, I enjoyed trying to kick his guy's butt every single day. That was my mission in life. But it, it's a weird situation, especially if you're going to be working together at the quarterback spot. I just don't see how it could work. Uh, go LSU from a little spot I did in Baton Rouge. says, how can you compare Fournette to Camaro when Camaro benefits greatly from having players like Michael Thomas, Drew Brees, Minshew, and D.D. Westbrook? It's not even fair. I think he was defending Fournette. But – yeah. I mean, there's no doubt Kamara's a better back, right? More explosive back, more exciting back. Um, Yeah, I mean, I mean I'll, let's I think, just say this. Nine out of ten teams yeah, in the NFL are going to take Kamara. Correct, correct. We yeah. couldn't get anybody to trade for Fournette. Correct, yes. According to Doug Marone. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, it, I don't like the, um, the Dabo Trevor talk just yet. Let's do that in January. Okay. Would you, listen, if the Jags are 2-14, and 14, right, they got the number one pick? Yeah. Would you endorse the idea of Doug Marone's gone? Shoot, he even said it yesterday. He's like, we're 2-14. and 14. I'm not here. Not here. Mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence is going to be the number one pick, you would think, yeah. at that time. Yeah. And you're changing. Would you endorse the idea of Dabble, or would you like somebody, would you like Josh McDaniels or somebody like that? I mean, do you, Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, to, to me, when you go all in like that and you have, like, that quarterback college coach, the pro, like, I guess I, I, it kind of turns me off a little bit because I've never really seen it before, right? So I don't know what that will look like. Now, yeah, fortune favors the bold. I get that. But I, I just can't see you coexisting and making it work in the NFL. I, I just can't see it. So I'd much rather have him even give him maybe a different college coach if there's, like, a big name out there. Um, who, who's the cat from Oklahoma? Oh, uh, Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley. But they just signed him to like a six-year okay, deal. Sure. Not okay. that well, that matters, but. Yeah. <laughs> hey, go ask Kingsbury how that's working out for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'd rather see that as opposed to maybe getting Dabo. Just my opinion. Though. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. I said earlier, right before the break, and, and I just put it on Twitter as well, the, the bottom line is, listen, I don't know if Kamara's going anywhere. Mm-hmm. That's floated out there now. Do the Saints keep him? Do other teams jump in? The sad reality is, and I will admit this because I think this is true. I don't think the Jags have even an ounce of interest yeah. in going to get one of the most exciting backs in the league. Well, I'm not going to pierce my nose then. Fine. But I, I just don't. I mean, I could be wrong. It's not like I've checked on it. I just don't get the feeling they are or would be interested, one, in trading for Kamara at this juncture with what yeah. they're doing, yeah. two, paying a back $14, $15 million a year. And I just don't get the sense that they would be that interested in it Yet they're still trying to tell us they want to win games. They're trying to put Minshew in a good position. Well, this well, yeah. this kind of move would do so many things from a statement perspective, from a we aren't tanking perspective, we're trying, we're going in a new direction, to start establishing stars again to build around, yeah. uh, to help Gardner Minshew succeed the most he could because you strip something else away from him, even though some will argue they helped by taking Fournette away, which is a tough argument, I think, to win. So... All those things would happen. 
I'm not saying Alvin Kamara would lead you to the Super Bowl, but it would it would really jumpstart a feeling of new, uh, the reboot they're trying to do in the right direction. He's a guy along with some others on that team that you could build around. Uh, it's amazing how a guy like Kamara, now that his name comes up, mm -hmm. now that that report comes out, I think from Josina Anderson, that the Saints would be willing to trade, gets you way more excited than the prospect of having a guy like Fournette. Yeah. But it does. It, it absolutely does. And listen, do I see the Jaguars doing this? Absolutely not. But if you want to justify it, because let's be honest, right? It's hard to justify it, right? It's hard to justify it. Well, you got rid of Fournette. You let Yanni go for what you did. You know, this kind of seems like a rebuild type of season. But then you go after one of the most intriguing running backs in the entire NFL. So what are you guys really trying to prove here? Like, what is the goal? And I would say that if the goal was truly to see if Gardner Minshew is the man going forward. And if Gardner Minshew is going to be that guy for years and years to come, then you give him every possible weapon at his disposal to get a fair assessment of what you're working with here, right? And if you're to bring in Alvin Kamara, and even more than Leonard, listen, I've been very adamant saying that I think your offense gets hindered when you lose Leonard Fournette. Well, you lost him, it is what it is. But I also am going to say if you got Alvin Kamara over Leonard Fournette, well, then your, your offense drastically increases and it becomes more intriguing and it helps out Gardner Minshew in ways that Leonard Fournette could probably never help out Gardner Minshew. So if the goal of this season is to see if Gardner Minshew is the guy, then you get him the ultimate fail safe. You, you get him the ultimate ace in the hole in Alvin Kamara, where now if you're a defense, you got to be like, well, geez, man, we got DJ Chark. We got Tyler Eifert. We'll see about him. But now they got Alvin Kamara. Are we going to stop the run? Are we going to stop him in the pass game? Who's going to cover Alvin Kamara? We putting a linebacker on him, safety on him, Gardner Minshew now? Like, it just opens up that playbook so much. And when you have a guy like Jay Gruden who lives and dies by that, who lives and dies by giving you different kind of looks, different kind of formations, different kind of motions, things like that, Alvin Kamara fits that. So I think it makes sense from a, a couple perspectives, but once again, I just can't see the Jaguars doing it. Yeah, I just don't. I mean, and that's the sad reality of it all. I, I don't – and it goes back to what we were talking about a little earlier. It's like, okay, I understand it's not my money. It's not my philosophy. It's not my plan. Well, this isn't fantasy football. Yeah. I get it. But <laughs> sometimes I treat it like it if is. all those things are true from your perspective, that it opens things up, it makes you better in 2020, it makes you better in 2021, probably makes you better in 2022. Mm -hmm. It gives your quarterback the best chance to succeed, who you probably sold the ownership that you believe in and that you've given this opportunity to. And it brings some excitement inside the building, brings some excitement outside the building, although that's not necessarily your job. Yet I feel like the Jags would have zero interest in doing this, and it speaks to do they think why are they so much smarter than the rest of us? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what we talked about earlier. It has that I Gene think, Smith esque feel. Yeah. Like, why not do this? This doesn't. I understand Alvin Kamara could be a final piece for some teams. Like the idea and, and of that could be point. a final piece. Well, it could, but the final. The you know what? The people with final piece destinations don't often have fourteen million dollars freed up and a new yeah. contract waiting to go. The Jaguars have money to spend. They could be saving some money because the cap's going to be different next year. But they still have plenty of money to spend. Mm -hmm. And this is a guy that. You know, you're going to get take chances in free agency. They also have draft capital. You could take one of those picks, trade it away, still uh, give this guy money, and really you've got plenty of cash and plenty of capital still. It doesn't do anything to set you back from any kind of plan you wanted to have in 2021. Yeah. It, it just doesn't. So if the idea is to get good football players so you can win football games, I would think you'd have to make take a sniff at this thing and at least see and who knows the jags might be but i'm just telling you i'm sitting here as the owner of the sunshine and rainbows club <laughs> and saying i don't even think the jaguars <laughs> I, I think the jaguars would see that and probably know that already that he's probably uh, on the trade table and they're like yeah of, that's, uh, that's a good read well, let's, let's go on to the next thing. Oh, That's my feeling. Of all people, Brent Martineau, the president of the Sunshine and Rainbows Club, isn't even going to leave the station for this one. You're not even going to campaign this one. You're just going to stay at home, sit on the couch, and say, yeah, it's raining outside. It's all good. I feel like that came across the Jaguars desk at some point. Hey, that's some uh, word that uh, Alvin Kamara mm. might be available. I was like, ah, good. I wonder where he lands. See you. <laughs> that 
Yeah, I got you. I mean, well, and, but, that's bad. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't usually think that way. Like, mm-hmm. I'd rather entertain it. But I'm going to sit here and tell you that's the way I'm thinking on this right now. Like, but, and that yeah. does show you that it, it it answers my question of what I asked earlier in the show. People are saying the Jags are tanking. Nah, I don't really think they're tanking because players don't do it, and Doug's going to try to save his job and uh, tanking. But if I ask you the question, are they really trying to win and really try to win, like teams go to the playoffs and try to make yourself as good as you can be, then I can't sit here and say yes because it doesn't look like they are. You know what's crazy about this whole thing, though? So, obviously, Elvin Kamara said, I mean, this is all speculation, right? But probably that that $14 million range, maybe $13 million range, correct? Well, well it, it, you'd be getting a deal at 13. He wants up close to 16. 16 You're going to have yeah. to pay him 14 and a half million a year. At okay. the very least is my guess. Okay. 14 I mean, and again, half. Mixon just got tw- a dozen for four years for a $48 million contract. Yeah. Kamara's, I-, I would pay more for Kamara than I would for Mixon. It's going to show you, though. So Le- Le- Le'Veon Bell making 13 million right now. And how's that going in New York? And then David Johnson making $13 million in Houston. In case you didn't know that. How's mm-hmm. that? We'll see how. Oh, we'll see, that's. To be determined, obviously. But it goes to show you, I mean, in terms of free agency, when you go after these high-priced running backs, and I'm going down the list here, and obviously not mixing that into the list, but he, keep in mind, he, he's in the house, right? So you have guys like Todd Gurley. We'll see. That still remains to be seen. I mean, it, it, it's hard to speculate because there's not a lot of guys that fit the mold here. It's just I can't see the Jaguars spending that much money if you're supposedly trying to start over and you're essentially bringing in a new guy to kind of win right now. It just doesn't make much sense. Well, quite frankly, I will say I think there are people around the league that also don't value the running back to that kind of dollar amount because you have – there's just so many examples. Kamara himself, who was what, in the third round, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, Mm -hmm. and found – and you have fifth-round guys that get found and you have sixth-round guys. That's a position over time that is trended toward being able to find a back that is suitable and sometimes a star Mm -hmm. in the later rounds. I mean, that's obviously what ticked people off about Fournette in the first place, that he was a top-five pick. And the Jaguars have a lot of draft capital coming up, keep in mind. Yeah, but Demetrius Harvey – says uh, this. He said Alvin Kamara has averaged five yards per carry through his career on 485 touches. Pretty good. Has 81 receptions in each of his three seasons. Has totaled 37 touchdowns rushing and receiving. And, well, I mean, that is with one of the best quarterbacks of all time and a very high-powered offense. You know, so, I mean, he's done a lot. Could he do that? Could he have that kind of production here in Jacksonville? Well, who knows? And maybe worth a try. Uh, the other running back news, uh, Leonard Fournette, by the way, has gone unclaimed off waivers. I mean, nobody is picking up that $4 million, uh, mm. and that's why the grievance was filed as well. So there you go. Where do you uh, see him going? Bro? Where, where do you think? Let's make our predictions right now. Where is Leonard Fournette going to go? Because he has a choice now, right? Yeah, he's been, yeah, he's a free agent. Yeah. So he he's if he has some suitors. Where are you going if you're Leonard Fournette? I'm trying to go to Tampa. Yeah, okay. We're on the same page. Uh, there are some rumblings about Tampa being involved with them anyway. I would think Seattle will be very interested in Sure. What do you think about Chicago with, with John Filippo there, though? You know, like obviously John Filippo loved him yeah. for as much as they gave him the rock. Hey, yeah, I mean, they threw it to him a bunch, too. Yeah. And, uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he's going to end up in Seattle. And the reason why is if there are some problems with him anyway that there's this underlying stuff, Pete yeah, Carroll doesn't Pete care. We're good. He doesn't care. We're all set. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see where Leonard uh, for Yeah, I'm sure up. we'll see him in the playoffs. You know, we'll see him probably hoist the Lombardi trophy. It's the way it usually goes. <laughs> there we him go. and Yannick. <laughs> him, and, him and Jan Paul. It's like we two NFC teams. But, yeah, I mean, who knows, man? <laughs> him and Yannick in the NFC championship game. Can't wait to watch it. Uh, the – well, here's the other thing. I mean, that's an interesting thing up in Minnesota, by the way, with Yannick is Dalvin Cook. I mean, Dalvin yeah. Cook's unhappy about his contract. And they basically said, you know what? Well, we don't really care about it right now. We're going to go fill up our cap space with Yann. Mm-hmm. We're tired of dealing with the, your situation. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know where that leaves him down the road. And Riley Before, Reef, uh, the offensive lineman, they just uh, extended him, according to the national guys. Yeah, so, it's – listen, man, I, I get it. The running back position – it's a fickle one, right, where you're always reloading at it and you don't really pay that top dollar position, let's just say. But to me, Dalvin Cook, when he's healthy, Brent, one of the best running backs in the league. And to me, Dalvin Cook is a, a big reason why 
they've been so successful. Because guess what? You just lost Stefan Diggs, and I think Thielen has shown that he can't do it himself. So if it was me, I would take care of Dalvin Cook, but that's just me. Uh, Ian Rappaport, by the way, 20 minutes ago said this, spoke to Saints running back Alvin Kamara and his agent. Neither had asked for or demanded a trade. As of today, they thought they were actively negotiating and making progress on an extension. Kamara has never threatened to hold out and has been in the building every day. Uh, Saints uh, Roto World also has this report. Uh, says Saints would want a first rounder for Kamara. So there's some back and forth going on here. Uh, right now, and I, you got Taysom Hill. You, how greedy can you get right now? All right, <laughs> you take a second rounder and go on with your lives. Hey, one thing we did not mention with all the news of Fournette and what's going on and with the Jags and my goodness, uh, <laughs> I, I was out at the scrimmage on Saturday. Oh yeah, how'd that go? And not great. I don't think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think. I, I think Minshew struggled early going. I mean, we're talking about practice, but. <laughs> There it is. You know, it just it wasn't great. I mean, it had a couple interceptions. DJ Hayden interception was a really bad one off uh, in the flat there. And so I think I think he rescued himself a little later. Or it could have been a bad narrative coming out of Saturday. Sure. And then it was trumped, obviously, by the Ngakwe news and also then the Fournette news. But inside the stadium, Jags didn't look great. Now, Colin Johnson continues to look unbelievable. I mean, you've seen that narrative. It's it's unreal. I mean, he yeah. has been really good. Uh, y- you don't usually look this good and then look bad in games. I mean, it's hard to look this good and this consistent mm-hmm. and be bad in games. But there's still that curiosity of can you translate it? How much will he even play? How many snaps will he get? How will they use him? But I tell you what. He's forced Jay Gruden and Keenan McCardell to put him in the rotation and see what they've got. Yeah, take note. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because it's starting to feel like, whoa, wait a minute now. Mm-hmm. And there are some people like in Texas, they're getting maybe a little wrapped up in it because he's a Longhorn. But there's like, hey, he's going to be a steal, steal the draft, oh, yeah. you know. Well, I'm sure Matthew McConaughey is going on his rants <laughs> on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to say, though, a fifth round pick is going to be like super steal. Right. I mean, you just don't know. There's too much that could go on there. And and I'm not doing that off three weeks of practice. But it's an interesting narrative that some people are like, hey, man, this guy was really good. Got banged up a little bit. His production went down last year. What's very interesting to me is the two receivers the Jaguars drafted. Yeah. They would have gone way higher if they had come out last year or if they were eligible to come sure. out. LaVisca Chenault lost, a, lost some, uh, uh, you know, what am I looking for? Uh draftability at least in the first round how about that <laughs> stock. I, was, I was gonna say stock, stock but i want to see you yes. come through it that's what and i wanted you, and you stock. gave us you gave us draftability i like it uh stock it works. yeah 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 uh, and he went to the second round yeah. but he was a, a lot of people thought he was a first round guy yep. coming out and yeah. would be in in 2020 mm-hmm. and so then he got banged up and he, and he hurt the stock a little bit then same goes for colin johnson i think he would have been drafted higher than the fifth round he's got some pedigree with his dad he's tall yeah uh, and we like that about him because he gives Love him it. something different. The red zone with him and Conley and probably Chark oh. could be interesting, right? I mean, that should set up Minshew pretty well. Take Fournette out of the equation. Yeah. That should set up, set up Minshew pretty well. Absolutely, yeah. So, I I mean, it's it's worth getting excited about by Colin Johnson. Yeah. The bottom line is he's still like their fourth or fifth receiver, yeah. even playing well, well. He is their fourth or fifth receiver, but remember, I mean, I think with Gruden you have different packages, right? And we have if we have a red zone package, because what was lacking last year for the Jacksonville Jaguars, that red zone off. Man, you had Chris Conley riding the bench for whatever reason. Guy jumps out of the gym, didn't use him like he should have. Whatever, John D. Filippo, enjoy Chicago. So, with that being said, I think when you incorporate him in a red zone package, you got Tyler Eifert, you got Colin Johnson, you got Chris Conley, you got LaVisca Chenault. Like, just throw literally just 500 it, Hail Mary, it, and say, go get it. Yeah. Somebody. You like your chances? You love your chances. Yeah, so yes. that's good. Uh, by the way, Devon Hamilton, Doug Costin looked good uh, yeah. hit the other night. Doug Costin is a guy, I'm telling you. Like, I'm, not, hey, you better I, take I'm not selling you, Doug Costin. <laughs> I'm just telling you, he's another guy that you look up and practice, and you're like, guy's making plays. Every time I look up, and I didn't have perfect attendance at practice, and that could be a very small sample. Yeah. But I'm just telling you, I saw him making plays, and I saw him making plays in the scrimmage again. And you just want remember when we were doing a like needle in a haystack kind of picks Correct. of the defensive line? I kind of dismissed him. I was like, come on, nah. Yeah. Well, maybe he shouldn't. Uh, I mean, he might really have a chance. He's made enough plays to have a chance mm-hmm. uh, to be a part of this team, especially a line with, that has a ton of attrition. Uh, and DJ Chark continues to be fantastic as well. Uh, I. What's interesting is their backup QB role. 
And I don't get wrapped up in backup QBs too much because I kind of feel like if you get to your backup QB, you're kind of screwed anyway. Correct. Uh, shoot, uh, the way the I'll Jacks have been, they've been screwed with their starting quarterback. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the I, I I tell you, I just don't – Dobbs and um, – and I like Do- Josh Dobbs, but Dobbs and Glennon do n- not do much for me in the time I've seen them. Well, uh, N- N- Ness is going to trade for Joshua Dobbs anyways <laughs> pretty soon here, so don't worry about him. But no, I get it. Like, and what I've heard too with Luton, it's it's the side. Like, he's got everything. Luton right. is is sneak. Like, I seriously think this. Okay, I think if they were to rank their quarterbacks, Luton would be second. I think they are unwilling to go into the season with, with Minshew and Luton. Yeah, you know. But I think if they were to rank them, I believe Luton has done better things, and and I think they kind of like it. And I think that also says a lot about Glennon and Dobbs. Yeah, so I think what you're saying here is Glennon or Dobbs will get the nod as a backup quarterback. You put Luton on uh, like the practice squad, but if a team, for whatever reason, out of the blue pursues him and tries to sign him, the Jaguars would probably have no problem cutting a Dobbs or a Glennon to keep Luton on their team. Yeah, I think the que- I think they have to wonder if they can. They probably can stick Luton on the practice squad, yeah. and then there's a protection of guys. You got to clear through the waiver system, but you got to. I I think they probably think they can do that. But I'm not convinced they think they can do that. Uh, and I think they also are going to keep three quarterbacks. Mm. And so my question is, does Glennon or Dobbs get cut? And the three quarterbacks they keep are Minshew, Luton, and Dobbs or Glennon. Mm. I could see that happening. Really? Not taking a chance. I mean, I, I don't know. Seriously. Well, I'm just not taking a chance on Luton on the practice squad or but, whatever. But else. keep in mind, Brian, if you put Luton on the practice squad, and someone tries to go after him, you still have the top priority. So say you put Luton on the practice squad, and let's say whatever. The, the New England Patriots want to get Luton. And let's say uh, the, the Patriots put their stake in for the waiver. We're, we're getting Luton on the practice squad. I'm pretty sure the Jaguars can still counter and say, no, we're going to assign him to the team of the practice squad. Because the same thing happened to me in Detroit. The reason I got cut from Detroit was because one of their practice squad guys was going to get grabbed up by, I think, Chicago. Or something like that. And they're like, well, we got to sign this guy because we don't want to lose him. He's an offensive lineman. So I was like, well, sorry, Austin, you're getting cut because one of our practice squad guys was going to get signed. Interesting. I, yeah. I think to, but but first to get to the practice squad, you still have to clear waivers. I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I was confused there. So what you're saying is. So you have is, to be released first. You have to true. make sure nobody picks you up. No, And then okay. you have to say, okay, well, we're bringing you back to the practice squad. See, this is, I didn't see that kind of scenario. I thought you meant like he's on the practice squad and like halfway through the season, a team comes knocking No, no, because then you have oh, to no, go to the active r- right roster. Away. That's a little different. And you can okay. protect this year. See, the roster is going to be, the practice squad is going to be different this year because you have those protections yeah. once they're there. And so they could protect if they think that's a threat. The other team sure, also okay. has to put them on the active roster as well. So I think it's a little less likely. But, but if they, I, I got it. So what, what, it's what, probably not likely anybody's going to take him. Okay, no. he's not that. He's not like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know. But I just think if you like him a little bit, if you think you have something, are you willing to risk that? It will be something to watch around cut time. So what you're saying essentially is you release him, put him on waivers, and then a team because they see a six round pick looks a little intriguing on on that first year deal, then you sign him as a. I see what you're saying now. Yeah. So which is, listen, it's always a possibility, but. It's unlikely. But I'm just going to say this. If the Jacksonville Jaguars, that happens, that sucks. Like, that's the last thing you want to well, happen. And that's my curiosity. Are yeah. they? Do, well, it will tell us a lot how much they like him mm-hmm. if they're unwilling to do something like that. Good point. Uh, and, and I'm just telling you this. I don't think they are in love with Dobbs or, or Glennon. I think they'll go with the experience of those guys. What will be interesting is do the Jags win out with Dobbs because they spent a fifth-round pick on him, mm-hmm. or do they win out with a guy like Glennon because I think Gruden has some past experience with Glennon. Yeah. So that's kind of the curiosity I have, which guy is going to be the main backup. Yeah. Um, and there's potential for him to keep both. The Jags are going to have three quarterbacks yeah. one way or another. Yeah. Uh, it looks like. I think Gruden kind of said it the other day, and – uh, Marone didn't necessarily say it, but I think teams are going to lean that way because of COVID-19. Uh, by the way, I think uh, another round of tests out in COVID-19, just four players uh, are on that list. So still good news story uh, for the NFL when it comes to that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we hit on a few more topics before uh, the end of the show. That includes a little NBA playoffs. I don't want to talk about it. A little more football. Let's talk about that. Hey, usually when you use, lose the first round, uh, first game, it, it works out well. Yeah, we'll see, huh? <laughs> How does Giannis only take 12 shots? 
and visibly upset in the press conference. Not, I, oh boy! I'm not, I'm not gonna free I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tolerate this Giannis slander. I'm not gonna do it. Careful, Listen, guys. Careful, guys. Sometimes no, you gotta no. wake up Careful. your best player. Careful, guys. I'm telling you right now, I, I will not tolerate any kind of Giannis slander. In, Does in Giannis last... need a clutch player around him well, for end game situation? He needs Chris Middleton to, you know, be Chris Middleton. That'd be a good start. We'll be back on ESPN 690. I hope so. Action Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau on ESPN 690 is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. A lingering shower, a thunderstorm in some spots into this evening. Otherwise, clearing skies tonight in the 70s, back into the uh, low 90s tomorrow with a few afternoon storms. From the First Alert Weather Center, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist, Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds. Save thousands right now with Beards Unbeatable Deals. Looking for a vehicle, but you just don't want any ride. You want the best you can get, and you don't want just any old savings. You want the best savings, right? Then it's time to get it all and get yourself over to Arlington Toyota pre-owned today. Finding the best ride starts with big time selection. And at Arlington Toyota, you'll find over 750 new and pre-owned on the lot every day. And it's all priced at savings to put you behind the wheel. If only you could get financed, right? Well, you can at Arlington. That's because Arlington Toyota's Credit for Everyone program means that if you've got a Beacon score between 450 or 850, Arlington's getting almost everyone approved. So why wait? Arlington's got the savings. Arlington's got the selection. And Arlington Toyota has got the financing. But Arlington's also got your back because you get a 30-day exchange policy with your purchase. That's 30 days to love it or exchange it. Just another way Arlington goes the extra mile for you. Get it all when you shop pre-owned at Arlington Toyota, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard, or online anytime at Arlington arlingtontoyota.com. Hi, I'm Hunt Hawkins, CEO of Steimart and Chair of the 2020 First Coast Heart Walk. The Heart Walk is going virtual, and while we might not be able to meet in person this year, we still need you to support the American Heart Association's mission of being a relentless force for a world of longer, healthier lives for all. At Steimart, caring is one of our core values, and we care about the health of our community. We will be unified in the fight to improve our health and the health of our families and our community. So let's walk, register, and start a fundraising team today at First coastheartwalk.org and then make plans to join us on Saturday, September 12th to Heartwalk where you are. Let's make a difference in the fight against heart disease and stroke. Again, register today at firstcoastheartwalk.org. Locally sponsored by Steinmart, Florida Blue, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Ascension St. Vincent's, Baptist Health, Brooks Rehabilitation, Main Street America, and Mayo Clinic. Nobody gives back like Diamonds Direct. That's right, it's back. Our most popular offer. Five years, zero interest financing. September is the time to buy at Diamonds Direct. Get the best price. Plus, spread your payments over five years with zero interest. And every purchase made in September will benefit No Kid Hungry's mission to end childhood hunger right here in our community. Buy now. Spread your payments over five years. And give at Diamonds Direct on approved credit. Visit DiamondsDirect.com for details. HBI, a national leader for career training in the building industry, is providing training, certification, and placement in the construction industry for veterans, their spouses, and children that are over the age of 18 at no cost. The following 2020 class dates are being offered August 10th, September 14th, October 19th, and November 16th. For more program and class details, please call Joe Jones at 407-717-7609 or visit the website at hbi.org. That's hbi.org. Internal Revenue Service. When you owe a personal or business tax debt and can't pay, just hearing those three words brings feelings of fear and anxiety. I'm Jonathan David Suryash, Managing Tax Attorney at J. David Tax Law. Everyone knows that if you owe the IRS and don't pay, it's only a matter of time before tax liens, wage garnishments, or bank levies happen to you. The first step to resolution is our no-cost consultation. We take the time to go through your specific tax problems step by step. We explain exactly what your options are and how we will resolve your tax issue. J. David Tax Law is a local firm right here in Jacksonville, where only an experienced tax attorney will represent you. Our fee payment plans are affordable for everyone. If you have tax problems, call us now for a no-cost consultation at 904-507-4777. That's 904-507-4777. Or find us on the web at jdavidtaxlaw.com. That's jdavidtaxlaw.com. 
Peace of mind is only a click or phone call away. I never knew my home would become my workplace. I never dreamed it would be my child's school. And I never imagined my home would be under attack from an invisible enemy called COVID-19. This is why I trust SafeTouch Security. It's one app that puts me in control. My SafeTouch system allows me to control who's on my property, movement while the kids are at home learning their school lessons, who I speak with without even opening the front door, as well as home deliveries, my heating and air conditioning, door locks, and complete protection against the threats of fire, burglary, and assault. You know, you can even have control over your car. Know you are safe with the most up-to-date security system from SafeTouch. SafeTouch Security has been doing what others can't for over 35 years. Reliable local monitoring. No other company comes close to SafeTouch's track record on guaranteed response times. Go to safetouch.com and find out how you can get zero down and free equipment with a lifetime warranty. That's safetouch.com. State license number EF0000233. At Diamonds Direct right now, there's nothing standing in your way of owning that magnificent piece of jewelry. Nothing. No down payment and no finance charges for five whole years. People are driving for hours to do this. On any purchase, just take that amazing Diamonds Direct price, divide by 60, and that's your payment. It's a smart way to buy. Keep your money in your pocket and still get that amazing ring or band or bracelet. Even that bigger diamond. Five years, zero interest on any purchase on approved credit. Only at Diamonds Direct. Off Town Center Parkway. You've worked hard all your life. Retirement worries shouldn't get in the way, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. But many Americans are finding that retiring on a fixed income is hard. Benefitscheckup.org is a free website from the National Council on Aging. With just a few clicks, you can see if you qualify for thousands of dollars to pay for food, medicine, utilities, and more. Benefitscheckup.org. You've earned this. This message is supported by the Administration for Community Living. Hey, does your car still only play CDs? No Bluetooth? No CarPlay? You've got an old, old car, my friend. You know what's better than an old, old car? A less old car. Get a car or truck that's new to you with a great used car loan from One to One Financial, Jacksonville's hometown credit union. Get pre-approved for a loan and shop at any dealership in town. Get a low, low rate and get rid of that old, old car today. Apply online at one to one fcuorg Federally insured by NCUA. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and school just isn't for you, earn while you learn by enrolling in the Clara White Mission Workforce Training, designed for 16 to 24-year-olds and no experience necessary. National certifications include culinary arts, OSHA, HAZWOPER, forklifting, environmental training, and more. These programs are customized for low-income and disadvantaged. Make your way to the Clara White Mission Training Center at 613 West Ashley Street. Call 904-354-4162 or visit clarawhitemission.org. ESPN 690 Sports Center Update. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jake Mitchell. Obviously, the big news yesterday was the Jags releasing former first round pick Leonard Fournette. Leon Searcy, former Jags lineman, wonders if maybe Jalen Ramsey was right about the team all along. And I thought I'd never say this, but I'm going to come to Jalen Ramsey's defense last year when he said that there was no culture of winning within the organization. And it's starting to look like that. Meanwhile, Doug Marone explains why he was released instead of traded. My question was, you know, can we get any value? And it was we couldn't we couldn't get any. So I uh, fifth, sixth, no, we couldn't we couldn't we couldn't get anything. And live from the bubble in the NBA last night, the Thunder pulled their series with the Rockets to three and three, making it even. Next game takes it, and the Heat took the first game in their series with the Milwaukee Bucks. If you're working from home and you want to listen to ESPN, no problem. Tell your smart speaker to play ESPN six ninety. Hey everybody, it's Brett Martineau from Action Sports Shacks. There's a good chance you have a smart speaker, so use it with the ESPN 690. Stay up to date on the Jags and all things sports by telling Alexa or Google to play ESPN 690. It's as easy as that. Make sure you listen weekdays 3 until 6 p.m. on ESPN 690. Brett Martineau. It's a, it's, there's three islands, and it can be very nice and lucrative, by the way. You could be a huge winner, but you could be a huge loser, too. You might not have a boat to get home. Austin Lane. Well, I like that, now. I love that analogy. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. On paper, with all the players they've lost, they could have the first pick in the draft. And if they do, unfortunately for Coach Barone, he probably won't be there. And then again, 
it's a package deal. If you're a Dabo Sweeney and you have any thoughts about ever going to the NFL, this is the perfect situation. It's right down the road and you're going with a franchise quarterback. So obviously a lot has to happen, but I think it becomes very realistic if Jacksonville does indeed have the first pick overall, which on paper they may, especially after the last 48 hours losing Ngakwe and Fournette. Hear that, Brunt? First pick of the draft. That's Mike Tannenbaum, and he kind of brought that up about the Dabble Swinney and, and Trevor Lawrence thing. Yeah. You know, here's the deal. If you get the Matt Rule deal to come to the NFL and it's eight years, it's definitely worth thinking about. See, Matt Rule didn't want to leave Baylor. Yeah. And, of course, there's a little posturing there. But when you get, like, I think it was an eight-year deal, maybe a seven. But when you get that kind of length deal and you're getting paid whatever it is, six, seven, eight million dollars a year. Now, keep in mind, Dabble's getting, what, like 10 million a year or something close to that now? Yeah. Eight to 10 million? It's I mean, why go anywhere? True, you know, mm -hmm. and it just depends what you like, uh, right? I mean, it's it's is it the grind of recruiting? Is it a better a schedule in the NFL? Is it Ooh, whatever? I don't know, man. There's a pretty big grind in the NFL as no well. No doubt. So yeah. it just depends uh, what you really want. Uh, and listen, we started the show today with a little bit of this conversation. Let's put a bow on it here with this, and then we'll get a little NBA topic too. But do you do you really think? I mean, do you get the sense now that the Jaguars are the one of the worst franchises in sports? Have they put themselves in that conversation? And should they be in that conversation? Well, first, let's start in the NFL. And let's think back to the last decade or so of performances and the optics and things like that. Besides the Cleveland Browns, maybe. Has anybody had it worse than the Jacksonville Jaguars? Well, the Bills were bad for a long time. They're coming out of it right now. Yeah. Right now. But, yeah. I mean, they've been really bad. Sure. I mean, the Jaguars had a better run over 20 years. It, it depends where you want to go with it. Over the last three years or the last two years, again, I remind people about the AFC Championship. The yeah. Bills didn't make it there. The Bills have been more successful and have more wins over the last three seasons combined, and they look like they're headed in a different direction, but they haven't done that yet. But the bad optics as well, Brent. There's been a lot of bad optics here. Uh, there have. Uh, yeah. the, the, Buffalo has bad optics to begin with, though, right? I mean, it's but, Buffalo. Yeah, and Buffalo but, has Buffalo. Cleveland on, has Cleveland. No, but come they on, do. man. We're talking two games in London. We're talking the grievance gate. We're talking Tom Coughlin speaking out against 100% mandatory people showing. Like, there's been so many bad optics here. I just think of this, okay? It, when you talk about this kind of topic, this topic doesn't just go over a 24-month period. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's it's not a fair measuring stick. Is your top topic over a 10-year period? Is it a 20-year period? Is it a five-year period? But to me, a one- to two-year sample of it doesn't make sense. That, that doesn't fit. So let's go 10 years. Let's then. go a 10-year period, and the Jaguars have had only one good season. So they're in the conversation on one of the worst teams in the NFL. Yeah. I think the Browns, under this ownership of Shad Khan, are the only team that has less wins than Shad Khan, which is, I think, 40 wins. Uh, keep in mind, before the St. Louis Rams went to L.A., the St. Louis Rams were on the top of this list, even ahead of the Browns and the Jaguars, I believe, in terms of ineptitude and inability to win, so futility came to mind. The Rams were key in that. They went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Why do the Rams get so much Enough credit said. for going to the Super Bowl, though, but the Jags don't get any credit for going to the AFC Championship game? Well, the Rams went to the Super Bowl, but they also have had a lot more success in the past couple of years than the Jaguars have had. They've had and, a few and, more wins, and, yeah. and they're a lot more intriguing this year than the Jaguars And they have right star now. power, and they have yeah. McVay, and now yeah. they're in L.A. Up a new stadium. There's, you know, just, there's a lot more. There is, yeah. but I'm just saying from a – I mean, you can – there are some people in L.A. wondering what the heck they, they just do. They got traded all their picks away over sure. these couple of years, put all their eggs in one basket. So maybe next year they'll look worse than they look this year. I don't know. Well, yeah, and, but once again, man, optics, it's not even close, Brent. It's not close from yeah. an optics standpoint. Uh the Browns are always on this list. They look like they might be coming out of it right now as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go into other sports, uh, you talk about, like, the Detroit Tigers, right? Sure. Uh, who else? You talk? Really, the Padres, who I want to actually talk about a little bit, but yep. they are coming out of it yeah, <laughs> right now. They so they don't seem to be in that mix. The Baltimore Orioles have certainly been in that mix. Marlins. Uh, the Marlins have been in that mix, but even the Marlins kind of hit on the radar once in a while and be yeah. like, boom, and win the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, that's more of over like a 20, 25-year period. Correct. Uh, if you think about basketball, I mean, the magic – I mean, to be honest with you, there's three Florida teams that fit right into this window. And that oh. is, well, four. The Marlins, yeah. the Magic, the Jags, and the Panthers. Yeah. They, okay. they, you talk about teams of irrelevancy, and they are that. I mean, the Marlins, 
are the Marlins. We just brought them up. Correct. The Panthers, to me, are the most irrelevant sports franchise in sports. Like, I, I said this a few weeks ago on the show. People, if you ask me about the Florida Panthers, I have to remind myself they still exist and didn't move. Sure. I, I really do. No, I, and listen, I understand that. But it's hockey, too. It's part right? of it like, because it's hockey. Part of it. But like, still, I, mean, I know the Lightning and what they're doing, no, man. For sure, I, for you sure. know the big six, and You're you know right. some of the big organizations. Uh, I, you just you know what San Jose's doing more than you know the Florida Panthers even still exist. Yeah. So they're in the conversation. Well, the Panthers have been point. in the playoffs a couple times, though. But the Panthers have. have. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and this is my point. Like We can go to the NBA and say the Knicks. Like The, the, the Knicks, to me, are like the laughing stock of the are. NBA. And, and maybe of all professional sports, right? I mean... Talk about bad optics. The Knicks might have the Jaguars beat. But at the same time, keep in mind the Knicks have been in the playoffs three times compared to the Jaguars one time in the past decade. So what does that really say? The Knicks have been in the playoffs three times? Yep. I believe so. Yeah. I'll look it up real quick. Uh, By yeah, the way. Th- three times. Yeah, they really. Yep. The, they feel worse than the Jags. Don't, well, don't well, the Knicks feel though. even worse than the Jags? Right now, absolutely. But remember, they had, remember when they had uh, Stoudemire, they had Anthony, too, for a little bit. Okay. I mean, so they had some success a little bit. Uh, the, and, 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 and the Jeremy Lin stuff. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the I will bring it back to Florida, though. The Orlando Magic are in this category. Now, They're again, they seem like they might be coming out of it. Yeah. Over these last two years, they make the postseason. They steal a game or two here. The, you know, but let's be honest. We're two hours away from Orlando. And nobody around here talks about the Magic. Now, the Jags get a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt because the NFL is such a machine that they're kind True, of in the yeah, conversation, you know? Sure. Or they're because they're such a machine, they're sometimes used as a punchline or because of the drama around them. Or once again, I say because of the one year of success where they caught everybody's attention. Uh, so they are what, definitely more relevant and talked about than even the Magic. Listen, in the, in the last 10 years, Orlando Magic... Five playoff appearances. They've been to the playoffs five times? Five, count them five, Brent. Last year, this year, 2011, and 2000, I'm sorry, four, well, if you count the 2009-2010 season, okay. that's five. Yeah, so five times. A, a little bit of that, too, is you're talking about six, half the league makes the playoffs. It's a little bit of a different formula. Mm, and yeah. I don't, but in fairness, I don't know how many times the Jags would have even made the playoffs yeah. if half the league made it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't, I'm not sure of that right off the top of my head. But, it, boy, does it feel like the, the Orlando Magic are way more irrelevant than the Jags have been. Now, we live in Jacksonville, so that's probably a very hard thing. Yeah. But I always find it odd in my 12 years here that we don't talk about the Orlando Magic at all. But let's keep in mind, too, it's the Miami Heat effect a little bit, right? When, when LeBron James went to Miami, when they had Dwayne Wade, um, when they had Chris Bosh, obviously the Magic were an afterthought, right? Because all eyes were on the Miami Heat. Well, we see that happening right now with the Buccaneers and Tom Brady. The, the Tampa Buccaneers are the hottest thing on ESPN. You know, we talked about it before. Jenna Lane, congratulations to your job with Tampa Buccaneers because you're about, you're about yes. to you probably make some buku bucks because she's talking Tampa Bay every single day on the mothership of ESPN. So with that being said, you got to wonder, do the Miami Dolphins get the, the get on the back burner? But keep in mind, they, they got Tua coming in now. They're a little intriguing. They're young. And Flores, we'll see what happens with them. I mean, like, are the Jacksonville Jaguars the black sheep now of Miami, you know, of, of Florida football, where it's like, well, you got Tampa Bay, you got Miami, and then there's Jacksonville. Yeah, it might be. Um, listen, I think the answer to this, <laughs> I am now seeing, uh, there are some comments on YouTube trying to get some of the comments, and one of the comments are uh, amongst many by Diego here. Brent, you own 2% of the Jacksonville Jaguars? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> That's what That's I'm awesome. saying. Uh, Can't say the T word. Can't. No. Um, but I think they are in the conversation, man, from a win-loss record. I, I, That's how you're judged. I, I don't know how you could sugarcoat the fact that – I hate to admit, I, love, I like a lot of people in that building. I, I know they're working their butt off to try to get it right. I think they have the opportunity here in front of them to change the city, the dynamic with Shotgun, what he's doing. I'm a believer in a lot of that stuff. Yeah. But sooner or later, you got to win. And yeah. you can't just always be the punchline. And you can't always miss. And well, they've done that often. I mean, the, the proof's in the pudding. I mean, you can't really – I got 2017, but out of 12 years, that's all I've got. Listen, and at the end of the day, what's going to happen during the next NFL draft? 
I'm going to sit there on my couch, watch the draft. I'm going to watch the Jaguars up to pick. They're going to cut to commercial. I'm going to get on Twitter. I'm going to complain about it and say they don't respect the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know what? Yeah. But, the, 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 but the more you break it down the past decade or so, and the more you look at the wins and losses, you look at the bad optics and all the drama, to be fair, man, why why would anybody else besides Jaguars fans care about that pick? Yeah. You know? It's fair. And, yeah, they've and, earned that. And it sucks to admit, and it's a come to Jesus moment, but yeah, I think you could make a case that the Jacksonville Jaguars are probably one of the worst sports teams right now in the country. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, sorry about your Bucks. They'll bounce back maybe in game two. Yeah. We'll uh, game seven we got with OKC. How about Billy D and OKC? Pretty Tell good. You, That's good stuff. By the way, Rockets' most overrated team I had in the, in the playoffs. Well, and, Let's finish it up. And don't forget, you got Denver and Utah tonight. Tonight. Uh, and we'll talk about them a little bit more tomorrow yeah. because Donovan Mitchell, Jamal Murray, they've been putting on a show. Get That's something that to watch. Oh, hey, that yeah. is something to watch tonight Get is Denver popcorn. against Utah. Even if you don't like the NBA, it'll be a fun watch. Hey, quick mention, the Action Sports Shack Dream 18 sold out so thanks for signing nice, up nice man congratulations uh, yeah good stuff yeah. it's a couple weeks away it's gonna be a lot uh, of work for sure you that. that means but <laughs> yeah. hey yeah, don't worry i'll put you to good... work as well ah, okay. first and 10 training camp coming up tonight 11 15 on cbs 47 and fox 30 we'll talk more about the jacks thanks for hanging with us today here on a tuesday on action sports jacks on espn 6 night Is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Well, 